Lewis, I hope it's warm where you are. Hi, Rue. Wait, how does this work? Here we go. There's the chat. Here we go. There's the chat. Let's <laughs> not, not have the echo. <clears throat> so yeah, this is kind of a very impromptu little live stream thing. I don't really know exactly uh, what the plan is, but I figured, I don't know, it'd be kind of fun. This will be my first night. I'll be staying in the house, so it'll be interesting. Uh, or at least first night by myself. So we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Hello, everybody. Wonderful to be here. Yeah, I am a little dusty. I've been working all day, so. <laughs> Time to meet the ghosts. We shall see, we shall see. Uh, I'll report back to you tomorrow and let you know if I've, I've heard any. But so far, just a lot of radiator noise and things like that. Typical old house noises. Uh, Snowden, Indiana, yeah, same thing going on here. Uh, yes, we do have heat. Uh, the boiler system works, so all the radiators that you see around um, they're decorative because they look pretty, but they're also, they exist, so. There's totally ghosts. I really haven't seen any. Um, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Rue. <laughs> yeah, I definitely do need a, a smoking jacket and a pipe. I think it would make it way more regal, although... It would probably make the place stink a little bit. Not only yeah, that's great. Just just for effect, I guess, right? Chew on it like a Sherlock Williams sort of thing. Sher Sherlock Holmes. Williams, where did that come from? Sound echoes. Um, I don't know how to... Ooh. Sorry, guys. Kim always does this. Uh, no... I have a full, sounds good, right guys? No, yay, no, maybe, hopefully. Uh... <laughs> I have a full 1880s wardrobe and a tool set. Would love to help if I can get to Missouri. Oh, that'd be awesome. Uh, Weird Flex, <laughs> 1969, that's awesome name by the way. And, and thanks for the five, like, thank you so much. Um, yeah, if you're around, let us know. Um, I mean, we always give tours to anybody who wants them. So, and, uh, if you'd want to help, like that'd be super cool too. I'm sure there's things you could teach me. Uh, I'm still learning so much about like how to do anything in the house and stuff like that. So, okay. Sounds good. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what the echo was about. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how that happened. Yeah, I, I would be down to have like a little bubble pipe. <laughs> Tell like beds, bed or bedtime stories or something like that. I think that'd be fun. From Murfreesboro. Is that over in Illinois, I think? Uh, would you allow metal detecting on the property? Yes, in fact, actually, most of these items here were metal detected in the yard. Um, we met a good friend from the channel pretty early on. Uh, his name's Phil, and he's found, he's, I think he's been here six or seven times. He's found all kinds of really cool things, like uh, this little lock here. It's from the World's Fair. So it says St. Louis on it. I'm sure it's all backwards to you guys, but. <laughs> um, and then there's, uh, well, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff up here. Some old plates and stuff. I was wondering maybe if like this aesthetic movement uh, lock plate was from uh, Mr. Hall's house because it was found in his yard. So I don't know. But yeah, we've had a lot of people through. Found some really cool things. Haunted Tales with Caleb. No, no ghostly sounds. Lots of radiator sounds, things like that. <laughs> yes, I have been painting with some Sherman Williams. 
Um, is St. Louis a quick to raise taxes as your property is improved? Um, it's kind of yet to be seen. Um, they've definitely been raising taxes on other, everything, but the taxes were so low on a lot of things, I can understand why they'd raise them somewhat. Um, I know in certain areas of the city, people complain about that. Um, so it's probably like anywhere else, I imagine they'll probably raise. But um, at the end of the day, it's, I guess, the cost to pay to, to do this. Like, I, I want the house to be better, so I, I have to inter or I have to go through the toll, if you will. So uh, it is what it is, I suppose. Go. Oh, it's gonna be hard to keep up. Not getting a picture. I think everybody else is getting a picture. I don't know. That might be something on your end. <laughs> Brownies. <laughs> it's a really cute name for you guys. I do like that. Uh, the bathroom's come along. I got almost all the plaster done. I've been working on uh, sanding a lot of the beadboard I have because it has like a, you know, like carbon deposits. I don't know. They're very dark. Uh, so I've been trying to clean those up and uh, figure that all out. Uh, but yeah, the bathroom's coming along nicely. Uh, Michelle, yeah, if you do a uh, road trip from California to Tennessee, uh, stop by. Um, at least on a, a Sunday or a Monday, or not on a Sunday or a Monday. The rest of the days are fine, but usually Sunday and Monday are really hard for me. Hello from Belgium. It's really, really late at night or early in the morning, depending on which way you want to look at it over there. So, man, <laughs> I'm surprised you guys are awake. Yeah, the, the radiators have little valves to, to blow themselves out, but the problem I've been having is one of the valves or something is, is uh, gets too full of water or whatever. For some reason, the boiler gets too much water and I have to continually let water out of it, which isn't it's terribly fun. Um, yeah, I well, the house is technical, or can you get historical status? Yes, I can get historical status, um, but I don't know what that does for taxes. Uh, we'll see. When will, uh, William, when will you be living in the house? Well, um, I'm technically tonight. <laughs> um, I mean, it's still living, but it's, it's kind of camping. Uh, you know, like I have boxes of cheese and some bottles of water and I'll be all right. The heat's on. So, uh, but yes, tonight will be the first like real night here, uh, by myself. So the official Brownie fan club founded. <laughs> somebody, somebody go ahead and write down the date so we know exactly when. East Paul, that sounds super annoying to keep letting the boiler out of the, or the water out of the boiler. It is, I mean, I usually do it every once every like three days and it's usually like a bucket, bucket and a half that it overfills. Um, and you can definitely tell when it's over full because it start the pipes, um, what's the, it's like a hydraulic method. Like, you know, old houses like this, the pipes make a lot of noise when they're heating up and, and stuff like that. Um, and you know, it, it gets, it gets annoying. So you kind of, know when it's got too much water in it or i can anyways now because of the sounds get annoying and you want to get the whole water out of it and fix it <clears throat> i see movement on the stairs oh behind me i mean maybe 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 there's a ghost up there but you're looking at it through a mirror so maybe you can only see it in the mirror i don't know <laughs> We'll need a live stream of your first bubble bath. Well, that might be hard in the bathroom I'm working on now because there is no bath. And uh, taking a bath in uh, the sink might be rather difficult. <laughs> is there just a shadow hanging out up there, guys? Everybody's seeing a ghost on the stairs. I don't see any ghosts. I mean, if there is a ghost, I don't know. They've always been friendly with, with me, let's say. So I don't know.
So how's the snow now? Um, quite deep in areas. It was a drier snow, so it kind of blew mounds up everywhere. So there's weird drifts all over the yard and stuff uh, all over my car and stuff, which is super fun. Um, but I have to figure out a way to dig myself out tomorrow. So, um, but we'll make it happen. Not a problem. Show your bed. Um, well, you guys have actually already seen my bed. It's the uh, fainting couch from uh, the last week, I think. So yeah, it's basically I did that and I took some pads and put it on the fainting couch and uh, covered it with ferny pads. And then I brought my own little blanket and a pillow and uh, it seems to work out okay. <laughs> Hi Kayla from sunny uh, summer's day in New Zealand, 3 p.m. Yeah, it's a little later for you guys, and uh, yeah, so the Southern Hemisphere, summer, a little bit jealous, but if I'm honest, if it's really, really hot, like it gets here in St. Louis, and especially if it's humid, I actually prefer the winter. I mean, I'm an ice hockey player, so, you know, I like winter sports and being out in the cold. I don't mind it so much. Are you going, or from Gene, are you going to shop for a gramophone or other musical instruments? Uh, is there an actual music room in the house? Uh, I don't think there would have been an actual music room uh, unless maybe the library or the nursery was turned into one or used as one. Uh, I mean, which is possible, I suppose. Um, but I don't think so. Uh, I am going to have a gramophone or at least one of those Edison uh, wax cylinder musical instruments. Um, this is an instrument, a player, I suppose. Um, but I, I, they're, they're technically a little bit too late yeah, too late for my house. Um, they're like about like 1900 is I think when most of those were coming out. Uh, since the house is 1890, it's a little off, but it's off, it's not off enough for where I, I mean, I really want one. They're, they're aesthetically really pleasing. So I think they'd be really cool here. Oh, I'm trying to catch up. If you have ghosts, no worries. They love that you're fixing up the home. All positive stuff there. Yeah, I mean, that's what I think. I mean, honestly, I, I walk around here. Most of the rooms are dark. I have very little light in most of the house. I mean, the reason this is so bright is because I literally have three lights directly on me. <laughs> um, but yeah, most of the house is dark. And so I just walk around my phone and find what I need to when I'm working here at night. And I've had no problems. Like, I think the scariest thing so far is uh, those Cooper Strip Club cans that I have occasionally they'll like, you know, expand and contract and stuff like that. And so the can will make a loud ting. And uh, yeah, once or twice it's made me jump because it's just a, a loud noise. Um, but yeah, other than that, no, nothing. Like it's, it's been peaceful. So if there are ghosts there, they don't bug me. Oh, driving from KC to St. Louis tomorrow. Yeah, good luck with that. I, I imagine the roads are not nice. At least they're not nice here. Um, Stella, how close is that house next door to you? Um, I would say it's probably about four feet, um, give or take. Um, it's, it's close. Uh, it's closer than I would like. It'd be ideal to be able to fix and repair parts of that house if they weren't quite so close. Um, but it is what it is. They built the house where they built the house and, um, I, I can't go back and undo that decision. So, <laughs> Weird flex. Uh, ghosts were happy until uh, with the work until you put up drywall. Well, they haven't, you know, made their displeasure known, so I think we're all right, even with the drywall. There was a lot of drywall up in the the second um, the second floor at the back of the house, like in the library and Kim's room and stuff like that. There was tons of drywall. All those ceilings were drywall. Um, no plaster to be found. So uh, there was lots of drywall already in here, and I took a lot out. Uh, let me see here. Have you stayed a full night in the house yet? Uh, I did way back um, in like November of 2020 when I first got the house. Um, me and a friend of mine uh, came out here and we're just like, look, we, we should we'll try to stay in the house at least once. And I said, okay, well, if you want to come over, we can do that. And so we stayed here, walked around, you know, did a little bit of like amateur-ish ghost hunty stuff. But not, I mean, not really. Like literally, we just walked around the house with a flashlight. Uh, and then had like a few beers, but it was, it was fun. It was like a little camping experience in the place. Um, and it was really nice to like wake up here. Um, so I think that's what I'm most excited about for this is just waking up here. 
Um, I don't have to, you know, come from my other house and drive over here so I can get right to work. So that'll be cool. Have you uh, seen the houses in Hyde Park? I assume you mean Hyde Park, St. Louis. Um, yes, there's some amazing houses over there. There's one block that's like incredible. Uh, it's kind of right off the park, but not like on the park itself. Um, actually, one of my favorite houses, which I believe was part of a hotel complex or something up there at one point, but half of the building's gone. It's, it's really amazing, it's super beautiful. Um, so if you guys uh, don't know anything about it, uh, Hyde Park in St. Louis, there's some really amazing architecture up there. He looks very tired in his eyes. Yes, I, I've been working all day. So, I mean, you know, it is how it is. The atmosphere at night will help you sleep nicely. Yeah, I think so. It, it is quite cozy in here. How well is the house insulated? Um, I mean, I guess by modern standards, probably not very well. We definitely have a few like holes and windows. We have some broken glass. Not everything's repaired, not everything's fixed. Um, so there are definitely holes. Uh, that being said, the radiators keep it, radiators and boiler, keep it about 60 to 65 in here typically. So, I mean, it's comfortable enough. I mean, like I'm in a hoodie, but I don't technically need it. I could take it off. Like I wouldn't be, you know, freezing to this, so. <laughs> Chippy spirit probably roams the house. I mean, potentially. <laughs> His domain's on the third floor. I actually haven't been up there so far. Uh, yes, uh, St. Louis does have a Hyde Park. Uh, Katie, I think you're, or Kate, you're, I think you're from England, right? So, of course, like Hyde Park in London's a, a, a much bigger, different thing. But it's, all of the U.S. is named after different parts of, of the world. So, like, Missouri has, like, a Krakow and a Mexico and bunch of other random cities and little towns, you know, so they name things all kinds of weird things. Will you make an art miniature of your house? Actually, yeah, um, I'm going to try to be working on this here in the next few days, but I think my little sister wants me to build her a Valentine's Day box of my house, which I think will be interesting. Will it be terribly complicated no because i don't have the time to do it because i'm repairing the house itself um but i think it'll be a fun little thing to do with her and uh she'll she'll really like it she really likes i've built her like a castle before and then i think her other valentine's day box is like a cat on a skateboard which was kind of fun so Sorry, it's a little slower because usually I have Kim here to read me the, the messages and she's better at it than me. So if this is uh, Q and a Q&A session is a little clunky, I apologize. Uh, name with hay. Um, five bucks. Thank you uh, so much. Has any of the Brown family descendants asked to see the place? Uh, would you give the tour if you did, if, uh, if they did? Uh, I would absolutely give anybody a tour. Again, I think this house is, um, I mean, it is a private house, but I, I do see it in many ways as public. Um, so, of course, anybody. Uh, that being said, as far as Brown family descendants, there's not a lot of them. Um, uh, I mean, I think we've come across two of them that are potentially still alive. Um but even at that point, you're getting so far away from, like, Mr. Brown. So it'd be, like, Lillian's great-granddaughter or something or Al Alfred. So Brown's children's great-grandchildren and stuff like that. So you're so far away from that. I don't know if they would even have the connection because, you know, I don't, I don't know. It's I guess it's so far off. It's kind of hard to, uh, to make that. Um, we are looking into maybe contacting a few of them, but uh, I haven't been contacted by any of, of the Brown descendants. Um, most of the kids didn't have kids, so or the, their kids died really young without having kids. So there's a lot of, um, uh, well, dead ends, if you will. <clears throat> Kim is taking care of the dogs, I think. Yes, yes, she is definitely taking care of the dogs. Um, hello from Glasgow, Scotland. Have you pro uh, progressed with any of the stencil designs for your walls yet? 
Um, not quite. Um, I mean, I've done that little Illustrator mock-up, and some of it's kind of rough. I kind of just threw it together. Um, so things are a little misaligned uh, on it, but uh, I do plan on cutting that out here pretty soon. I'll probably make three of them, uh, stencils, that is. Um, and mostly that's because you want one that's straight and perfect for a wall, and then you want ones that you can kind of bend and fold and push into the corners so you can get everything kind of perfect. Oh, you guys are so kind. Like, again, I've always, I always say this, but don't feel like you guys ever have to give me money. I'm going to try to answer as many questions as humanly possible, and, and money isn't the factor of, you know, what I answer. But I do thank you guys deeply. Thank you. Um, whoa. Mork and, and Kidder, thank you guys both each for the, the 10. You guys are awesome. Um, if you guys have a question, like, you know, put it in there. Like, I'll, I'll definitely answer it. Uh, try to get, like I said, try to get all of them. Bowmanville, Ontario. That's a cool name. And, he and hello. <laughs> From Michael, the first resident of my 1896 house designed and lived in so many houses in the area, none of them for more than three years, so none of his descendants would care. I mean... There is actually, yeah, I mean, I can understand that too, because if it's just like, oh, he, this is just a random place he was. Um, but I think this is the first house that Brown built himself. Uh, there is a person, uh, because after Brown lived here, he moved in, I think, 1913 or 1915, I think it's one of those two years. He moved to Huntley, which is a, a very wealthy neighborhood in St. Louis. Uh, it was wealthy, well, it's country then, very wealthy now. Um, but uh, so... Essentially, he has a house over there that's a very arts and crafts designed house, and I would really like to talk to the owner of that house. Um, be because it's such a wealthy area, I don't know how comfortable f somebody from that area would be speaking with me. Uh, I mean, you know, it is with people with certain amounts of money, people can be, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm putting too much thought into this, but I do want to contact that person because our house is... Uh, share a link. So I think that'd be really interesting to see. And that is the house that Brown died in, so... Greetings from Guatemala. Uh, uh, my dad is a Spanish colonial antique furniture restorer and loves watching your videos. Oh, that's really awesome. Switzerland, that's really, really, I mean, you guys are uh, really early in the morning. It's like 3 a.m. there, right? Um, but hello. <laughs> Do you talk to people next door? Um, uh, from Trace. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, I talked to the lady next door. I don't want to throw anybody's name out there. And I talked to the lady the next door down as well. That's where that door is from that I was working on a few videos back and still need to finish. Um, and then I, there's neighbors further down um, that I speak to a lot. Uh, again, I, don't, I haven't asked them, hey, can I say your name online? So I'm not going to do that. Um, but all the neighbors I've met here so far have been nothing but absolutely wonderful to me. They're the best neighbors I've ever had. Um, anywhere. So, uh, they're really great. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't say enough about how wonderful the people have been here so far. Like they're just, that's the best. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the neighbors for sure. <laughs> they don't sleep in Switzerland. Yeah, I guess not. There's uh, so many cool things to do in Switzerland. Switzerland's like the most beautiful country, or at least one of the most beautiful countries. It's an amazing place. <clears throat> Weird flex. Uh, dude, again, thanks for the 20. Uh, boiler issue should be a simple fix. You should have a feed pump with a float shut off. Take a peek into it. Um, it's the same principle as a, a toilet tank. Here's the thing. is The boiler is not an old boiler, so I don't think that's the same thing that's going on down there. There's an electric feed. So, I mean, maybe potentially inside the boiler there's something in there that tells the electric feed to send more water through. But I'm thinking there's something wrong with the electric feed. Um... I mean, I had boiler guys out. They they took the entire thing apart and put it all back together. Um, so, or, you know, roughly anyways. Again, I don't 100% know because I don't know boilers. I'm not a boiler technician. Um, 
However, they, they couldn't figure out exactly why it was doing it. So essentially, I just keep the valve barely shut. I don't want to not give it water just in case it burns too much off. Um, you know, I, essentially, if you burn all the water off, you can turn this into a pressure vessel. And uh, I don't want to do that either. I kind of like the house. and I don't want to destroy it with a what essentially would be a bomb under the floor. <laughs> so, you know, not, not trying to do that. But, um, I mean, it just kind of is what it is right now. I imagine the boiler isn't going to last too much longer um, before I have to probably replace it three, maybe four years. Uh, so I'm kind of just trying to hobble along and, and get it to function for a while. Um, that way I can pay for all the other things that have to be done here and not really worry about the boiler too, too much. Um, I think they have a lifespan of like 10 years, if I'm not mistaken, like modern boilers, which is odd because the old ones ran forever. <laughs> They're also heated with coal, so I guess that's a bit different. Oh, it being new is what I was betting off of. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure, man. I, I just don't know the, the boiler system terribly well. Like, I know enough to fix it, light the pilot, things like that, but, uh, or like, barely fix it, uh, or at least somewhat troubleshoot it, so. Um... Oh, thanks, Arizona Alchemy, uh, for the five. And, um, yeah, glad you would like to contribute. But, again, like, nobody, nobody feels they have to. But but thank you. Thank you so much. And Cur uh, D. Curly, thank you as well for – is that a dancing pair? That is a very, very happy, very dancey pair. <laughs> it's cute. Thank you. 463 watching. Wow. That's a lot of people, guys. Um – uh, Rita doesn't need an HVAC, uh, with a boiler, does he? Um, well, the thing is the boiler doesn't cool the air. It only heats it. Um, and the summers in St. Louis, like basically how St. Louis is situated, we're kind of like in the center of the country. So in the winter, we're like a Northern state. It's cold. It snows. It's the worst there. And then in the summer we get the opposite. It's hot and humid, like a Southern state. So we kind of get the worst of both worlds. Um, and I can kind of handle it being a little chilly in a house, but it being hot and humid and sticky and gross is where I, I, I can't sleep. I, I get cranky. So no, I have to still have an HVAC and we'll have a backup heating element in the HVAC as well, just cause redundancy is a, a good thing to plan for. Um, so we'll have that redundant system as well. So we definitely still need an HVAC. Hello from Indiana. My husband found your channel. He used to live in St. Louis and enjoys your info about St. Louis and period. Yeah, it, it, I think it's fun to talk about the story of, of my city and, and the house and the period. And I mean, I think that's where I have the most fun with this channel is kind of, I don't know, un uncovering the, the, the stories and the, the lives and the, the different people who lived here. And what was that like for them? You know, I think that's the coolest part of any of this. So I've had a lot of fun with it. I'm glad a lot of you guys enjoy that as well. <clears throat> My boiler is a tank with an air bladder that maintains pressure around 14 PSI. Well, I guess there's a difference here too as well, guys, because I don't know if you guys are talking about water um, radi or water boiler systems and radiators. I don't have a water, a hot water one. I have a, um, a steam radiator. It's an older system, an older style system. So it's a two pipe, so one pipe in, one pipe out steam radiators or steam boiler system. Um, so I don't know that I would have a pump. And I think the water strictly hot water ones run at higher PSI. My boiler only runs at two or three PSI, like at most. So uh, I don't know if it's apples and oranges necessarily, uh, but I know they operate differently. So I'm not exactly sure how everything is. I'm talking about things I don't know a lot about, but I'm trying. I like dancing pairs. When are you planning on spending your first night sleeping in the house? Tonight, well... Technically, I've already done that. Uh, I camped here with a friend really early on, uh, but I'll be sleeping here for the first time by myself tonight. Uh, my bed's right here. So I guess I, I guess I can show you guys that real quick. So, see? 
My bed's all set up and ready. I've even got cookies hanging out over there. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> oh man, they, 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 all the, these things come in so fast sometimes. Um, hi, Caleb, you're snowed in there. How much uh, snow are you expecting? So we've got most of the snow already and because it's in drifts, it's hard to say. So I probably, uh, I was out there earlier and some of it came up almost to my knee. So about, you know, a foot and a half to two feet. Um, and there's some areas that are barely covered like an inch or two. So you just have these big drifts that have kind of pushed up on everything because the wind or the snow was so dry that it's just kind of been blowing around and hitting weird things. There's some really cool like uh, snow sculpture, if you will, that's been carved by the wind that's actually really cool out there. Uh, like at the old veterinarian's uh, door on the side of the house, there's this really cool drift that's got like a point to it. I don't know, it's cool. I'll uh, take some photos and put them up for you guys. How, uh, Jan 2020, I guess, asked the question, uh, how does one redo painted radiators? Uh, to be honest, I think you just strip them. Although I, I, I know some people sandblast them and things like that, and that's probably the better way to go. Um, for me, I'm not exactly sure how I'm doing it. It seems when they get hot, the paint does peel off a little easier, like with everything. Um, I haven't tested any of the paint on them. I don't know if it's lead or what. Um, but because it's kind of elastic, I imagine it's acrylic of some sort. Um, but yeah, I'm not for sure quite yet. I haven't really done it. I thought you would maybe use like gun blue on them. So like strip everything off and, and blue them like you would like a rifle or something like that. But I don't know if that works with cast iron per se. So, um, and I don't know what the real look of them would have been. Uh, back in the day either if it had been raw metal I mean obviously they had to put some kind of coating on it but I don't know what that what that would have been I haven't looked into it enough quite yet from Sully 10 bucks thanks thank you uh, so very much again you guys are always way way too kind <laughs> um Check HVAC in the old uh, pre-Civil War B&Bs uh, in Galena, Illinois. Very non-invasive, barely noticeable. Uh, just a small cased hole in the ceilings. Yeah, essentially that's what I'm doing. It's, it's uh, called um, high velocity uh, HVAC. Um, and the ducts are only three inches around. They're about, you know, yay big. Uh, and essentially that's, and you have to run a few of them to the rooms, but they're really small and the ducting in the wall is only three inches as well. So you can kind of get it and snake it between walls. Now the first floor of this house, um, so like the parlors and all that stuff, are gonna have uh, the HVAC system in the basement and I'll just lose space down there. It'll be a conventional system. But on the second floor with all the transoms and all that, I can't drop any soffits and I refuse to. I will not mess up this house in that way. So um, yeah, I'll be using this, uh, it's called a Unico system, but it's this high velocity HVAC system. And I hear it's loud, I hear it's less efficient, I hear this and that, but it doesn't matter to me because having the aesthetic of the house ruined for air conditioning is not okay with me. I'd rather put window units in than destroy the plaster ceilings. Um, so, but yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do here, but that's exactly why it isn't in yet because it costs about double the amount. Um, and you have to have like certain technicians, you know, handle this stuff and it's a mess. It's expensive. Um, and that's why it isn't in yet. And that's why the library doesn't have a ceiling. <laughs> um, she'll check out a couple places here in Fox Valley, Wisconsin, Gregerson mansion, uh, Kawakuna. I tried, I tried. Um, there's a Victorian in Appleton that is a historical site. I mean, if I get up to Wisconsin anytime soon, for sure, I think as I move around the country, I'm gonna try to hit some different spots, get more inspiration and things like that. Oh, D Curly, tell your nieces, thank you for the Girl Scout cookies. I will for sure do that. They were, you guys, by the way, like rocked the world. They were so, so, so very excited. So thank you guys all who have bought cookies. Like you made two little girls year. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, they're very, very happy. 
Yeah, mine has a water boiler, totally different than yours. Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, the, the hot water radiators and boiler systems and steam, are, I think they're completely different. They work very differently. And um, all modern stuff, so like in Europe and stuff, they still use uh, boilers and radiators. Uh, I think everything over there is hot water. I think it's more efficient. I think it's better. But these are older system, and you can't run hot water through a steam radiator because you'll just have water shoot out of the... Uh, 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 the valve on the side that releases pressure, so. Uh, so are you, if you already discussed this, do you think the house is haunted? Uh, no, personally, I don't think the house is haunted. I, I mean, maybe. Uh, I would say that I'm probably a bit skeptical of all of that, I, and I haven't seen any reason to believe that it is. I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't know what happens in the afterlife or with ghosts or anything like that. I, I just, I just don't know. Um, so I, I, I don't think so. Lucinda, thank you so much for the 20. And I really hope I did say your name correctly. It is so hard to keep up with all of this. If I'm missing your guys' questions, I apologize profusely. It's just, you know, it's it's difficult with so many of them, of course. And like I said, I, I try my best. Uh, it would be wise to have at least one working fireplace, even just for emergencies. Uh, the problem with the fireplaces um, is they're very small because they're coal-burning fireplaces. Um, the amount of money it would probably cost to make a fireplace work for the amount of fire you could actually burn in them, it's it's not terribly cost efficient. Um, I mean, you'd be better off for emergencies having a generator out back, you know, or something like that. Um, I mean, there's you just could get like a log of maybe this size because the fireboxes are so small because they burn coal and coal is so much more energy dense and the heat you would get off of coal is obviously much more than you would for wood. That's why when you go into people's houses now and you see a fireplace, they're huge, you know, you. You need quite a bit of space to burn wood and to get enough draft to keep the smoke coming out. Um, so they're just not really made for the modern world, these these fireplaces. So to have them work, I think it's, it's definitely a bit overkill. Um, and the price to reline a chimney is for sure way more than I can do right now. So maybe that's something I can do in the future um, with maybe the front uh, parlor and the uh, main master bedroom upstairs. I could have those two going. Um, but like even this one behind me uh, and the one in uh, Mr. Brown's room, the, the second master bedroom above me, because that's what connects here. Um, this one I couldn't use because the boiler's directly below me and they've redone the flue in this one with the boiler exhaust. Or So, you know, this this I could never turn back to to working again. Hello from Gulfport. What type of finish will you be using on the floors? Uh, I've been back and forth on that. Um, I hear it's possible to use shellac, even though shellac's kind of a weaker um, covering. It was used for a while uh, in that way. And I hear that there is a certain kind of shellac called button lac, which is a harder type of shellac or a tougher type of shellac that you can use on this. Now, of course, if somebody comes and spills a cup of vodka, well, Ugh, bummer, right? Um, but I've actually been thinking about doing shellac as a base for the color and the look of it and then coating it in a product called Waterlocks. Uh, I think that's what it's called. It's been a minute since I've looked into this. So I think um, that might be the way to go with all of this stuff. Oh, I see somebody. somebody's talking about uh, John or Dirt Pickle. Um, I don't know how I... What happened to your friend Dirt Pickle? I, Dirt Pickle. So for those of you guys don't know, um, the guy who came and helped me with my electric, and I've been meaning to make a video about this, but I don't know how to cover it because it's, it's just tragic. It, it's awful. The guy was one of the nicest guys. Uh, he, again, for those who don't know, this guy, John, he drove from Cincinnati, Cincinnati to come down here and just help me with my electrical. He paid for his own hotel room he, he just did it because he wanted to do it, because he wanted to help me. Um, he was really, really amazing, super nice guy. We had been talking afterwards. Um, I don't, and he passed away on January 10th. Um, 
and I, I don't, I don't know. You know, I talk about it because it just, it just sucks. It, it sucks so much because he's such a rad dude. Um, but I don't exactly know what happened to him. Um, his death is listed as unknown. Um, I don't feel like poking and prodding his family because I don't know his family. And I, I don't, I only knew John um, for, you know, four months. Um, and really only met him in person for three days. So I don't feel it's right to, to ask his family too many questions. Um, and again, on his certificate or death certificate or whatever, or what they put out, the coroner put out or whatever, is death is unknown. And I don't know what that means. I don't know what was going on in his life. Um, I heard he was, or he was talking to us and saying his back hurt and he wasn't feeling well. But I'm not here to speculate. I have no idea. Um, I just, he was, he was a young dude, 41. It's not terribly old. He had a lot of dreams, a lot of goals. He was working on a house like I'm working on a house. Like, and he was doing it in such a cool and creative way. And I think it is so terrible that his life was cut short like that. And I don't know what happened. I just, I wish his family the best. I wish... Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. I don't have words for something like this. I just. Uh, yeah, it's about the worst thing ever. So. Um, uh, thank you for the the nine ninety nine, Marie. Um, thank you so so much. Thank you guys all so much. My cousin died. They never figured out how or why. I mean, I guess sometimes it just happens, right? Like natural causes, but I mean, with so many things that are happening in the world, like, obviously the, the thing that uh, YouTube doesn't like us talking about. Um, but you know, other things, uh, you know, you never know, like, you know, tomorrow's never promised to anybody. And um, so I, I guess the moral of the story here is uh, live every day like it's your last, or at least be doing something that you enjoyed that day. At least do something small that day that you enjoyed, that way you, know, you can get the most as you can out of life, I guess. Again, I don't, <laughs> I'm so not good with words. <laughs> you need more water? I got more water, don't worry. We're good. As I drop some, <laughs> a granola bar on the floor. How generous of a soul to come and help you. Amazing. Yeah. And I mean, didn't, yeah, I don't know who does that. I mean, that's, that's a, I think a rare person to drive three or 300 plus miles to come out here and just be like, yeah, I want to help you make this happen. It's, uh, there's not many Johns in the world. Let's say there's a lot of people with the name John, <laughs> like my father, but you know, there's not very many people who have, you know, I don't know that kind of selflessness in their heart. I think it's, uh, it's just sad, you know. I know he had a lot more to kind of show the world and teach people because he was doing things in a very different way than I'm doing it. He, he like, was, like, hooking up his uh, furnace and stuff and figuring out how efficient he could make it. It was, like, it was like a tech way of, of, like, making your house efficient and putting it back together. It was really cool. Very different. I, I haven't seen a channel actually out there like his, so... It is what it is, I guess. I, I don't, you know, what do you say? Oh, thank you, Jess. Thank you for storing this beautiful home. Um, for your fireplaces you can't restore, would you convert them to gas? The goal is to put the house back for what it once was. I feel, uh, I feel bad asking. No, I, I, it's, not, it's not a bad question, actually. Uh, it's a great question. And ask away. And um, again, thank you for the 10. But um, they, there's one behind me, so... I move off to the side here and point you guys down just a little bit. You see this pipe here? At some point, somebody had a gas line running up here. And I believe actually in the, the second master bedroom here, there was a, or there still is, a little like weird insert that I believe is a gas uh, heat source of some kind. Uh, I have no idea how it works, but that's definitely been done here. And I think it could be done again. Um, there's also the possibility of doing like a little electric logs. Um, 
In fact, I believe uh, Shelly's house at the Magic Chef Mansion actually has, because her house was built in 1905, at that house she, they actually have little electric logs that are from the era that they would use and said, like, it was never a real working fireplace. They actually always had these little electric logs in them that had little flickers of light. So, I don't know, it's kind of interesting. There's some kind of um, precedent, I suppose, historic precedent in doing something like that. And I would be completely okay with that. I just have to figure out what that looks like. Gas, they just look like coal burning. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool. Um, I, I would have to, again, I haven't looked into it because it's such a far down the road thing. I haven't put much time into researching it. Um, I mean, of course I would like that to be something that happens. Um, you know, I, I think it would be really cool. And again, yeah, the same idea applies to the fireplace as it does the rest of the house. I want the house to look and feel like it did back then. And um, I think having a, at least something that resembles coal in the fireplace, I think would be really cool. Or maybe I just set something up with coal and we just never light the coal. It's just there or as a prop or fake coal or something. Even then, I think you would get the, the idea behind it. And then in the summer, of course, you have the summer covers that go over everything. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll play with the idea. I just have to get further along in the research to figure that all out. 73 in North Carolina today. Lucky. <laughs> My family in Florida said it was 75 there today. Yeah, but you also have to deal with really, really, really hot and really, really, really humid summers. So Florida can have their 75 today and all of a summer that's a little nicer. <laughs> This is not just a house that has touched many lives. I, I, I can't agree more with that. Like that's, I mean, it did start out with me just wanting to put this house back together and be extremely sympathetic in doing so. Um, but I've always thought of this project and I have told you guys a million times is this is not just my house. I mean, I'm just a curator, let's say for right now, just a, a caretaker. Um, I want this to be a house for the city. I want this to be a house for others who wanna come see these things. Uh, and I, I think I've described this to, to you guys a few times. I've always driven by these houses as a kid and thought like, oh, I wonder what that looks like inside. Well, I want to make sure that people have an idea of what one of these things look like. You know, they can come inside and, and explore and have, you know, touch things and be part of it. Um, and I think that's cool. And I don't know how many places there are like that anymore. Um, and especially one that's been documented this well. I think it's a, it's a rare opportunity I have here to you know, share this stuff with you guys. And um, I, I can't spoil it, you know? Like, I really wanna, you know, I wanna invite you guys all over here at one point. <laughs> Keep seeing movement on the chairs. These chairs? Oh, I think it's, the floor is a little wibble wobbly, so things move. Um, this chair is a little wibble wobbly as well. I mean, it's an antique, like like everything in this house, so they're not perfectly straight or flat or together anymore, so. Oh. Um, I think there's somebody we're talking about the Super Bowl in Switzerland. Um, I don't think I have an answer for those. How's it going with the historical registry? Um, I've not tried to like, you know, like get the plaques on the side of the building. I don't know how that works. The one thing we've done as far as like historical things is we've gotten uh, historical tax credits uh, and we got state and federal. Um, federal is a little trickier because you have to um, prove that you're a business to do it. And technically with the YouTube, we are. And as we, I've said from the beginning, I want to make sure people are able to a tour this place and B, come and stay here for a night if they would like. Um, Again, I don't know how that looks. I know I've discussed that at length, but um, so we were able to get federal because of that. So we have the tax credits. Uh, as far as getting this to be a historical site, I don't exactly know what goes into that. I don't know the the benefits versus the um, like the 
um, we'll just say, you know, there's there's a yin, yin and yang to everything. So I, I don't know how that goes. Like, what would they restrict me from doing here if it is a historical site? Um, what are the, you know, the benefits of it being a story? You know, I just don't know. So, uh, but I will definitely look into it because again, I don't want this place to like, after I'm gone, I want the place to carry on as it is. So I'm hoping to set this up into some kind of trust or something, or I don't know, maybe just give it to the people who run the Campbell house. I don't know. I'm just hoping it stays uh, the way I put it back together and is, is kept in its 1890s, uh, standard. So fingers crossed. That's actually what happens. Um, how are you financing this renovation? Um, believe it or not, it's, uh, it's with this channel. Um, now I had a day job before this and that was how I was financing it. And it was just basically a little bit at a time, you know, every month I have like an extra two grand that I can throw at it sort of thing. Um, so essentially that's what's happening. Uh, now after I get the kitchen done and all of the windows done, I can technically get a, a, a loan, a, a mortgage on this house. And so I'm hoping that that will speed things up. But of course, there's a bunch of things that have to be done before I can get to the point of finishing that to get the mortgage. So like everything, it's a catch-22. You need the money to get the systems in, that way you can put ceilings in. But you know, but you would need the mortgage money to pay for the systems to put that in. So, I mean, things are just slow. I have to take it easy and just as I have money, put it in. Um, I'm in this for the, you know, the long haul. This is definitely a marathon and not a sprint. Um, and I understand that. Um, and I understand that from the beginning, like I, I didn't have enough money to finish this place. Um, and it's going to be a while before I do. Um, so I just have to do it a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. So let me see here. I'm dying to know, is your channel part, uh, name part Victorian reference and part Star Wars reference? Well, I mean, of course, um, uh, and th thanks for the five as well. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's it was just a two, such a good play on words because the house is a second empire house. And um, I don't know, I was just kind of thinking in my head, like it, it just sounded good. Like it's just a funny little pun. And I think uh, I think people like it. So, and, and I really like it. So I, it was just kind of a too good of a play on words to not name it the second empire strikes back. So, and that's exactly what we're doing here. We're the building striking back. It's coming back. It's being reborn. So... I, it just worked on too many too many levels, so it had to be the Empire Strikes the Second Empire Strikes Back. Can't just say the Empire Strikes Back. I'll have Disney over here <laughs> trying to fight me. <laughs> and just thanks for the five. Uh, and yeah, I I really wanted to explain about John Dirt Pickle. Um, I just didn't know how to do it. Um, I, eventually, I'll still have to make that video. Uh, but I also had to figure out how to turn off monetization because it doesn't allow me to do it as easy as it does back in the day. So, and I don't want to make money off of his, um, of his loss. I don't think that's right morally. I can't do that. So I had to figure out how to, uh, how to make it work. I don't know yet. Caleb, I saw Lane from Our Restoration Nation talking about the topic of historic reg registry recently. She might be able to provide you with some helpful info. I I'm very sure they will. Uh, we've spoken to them briefly on and off. Uh, we're friendly, if you will. And they're super cool people. I mean, the work they do is amazing. Um, and they're way more professional about it than me because they've been doing it for, for much, much longer. Um, so, but yeah. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely look into it. Again, I don't know the, the, the benefits, the, the pros and the cons to being on the historic registry, so I actually look into it. Um, I mean, for instance, like I know that, well, for instance, the UK, like they're listed buildings. I know there's a huge board of people you have to go through to do anything to your house whatsoever. And, you know, that, that's good because the house gets preserved and it gets, you know, it stays the way it is. But also then some people can't afford to fix it up because the way they want to do it is... 10 times more expensive than it would be if you did it another way. So, you know, like maybe, maybe I get it on the historic registry and they're like, that little piece of drywall, Caleb, that you put up on the bathroom in there, that's not okay now. You must rip that down and replaster. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like they, they get into particulars. Um, so as much as like, obviously I want this to all go back original. I, I also don't want them to be like, I don't know, you have to use 
hand tools or something. You know what I'm saying? Something, something, something silly, right? Um, we completely renovated the house, but it didn't restore what we... Oh, I think that's... I think I'm missing that one. Um, uh. <laughs> Thanks, Weird Flex. Uh, um, he said another five It's a, because it's a Star Wars reference too and to make all my donations and even 50. Hopefully this will buy you a case of beer and some snacks. Oh, thanks, man. I don't think I can go out and get any beer right now. It might be a little bit difficult to get out of my driveway, but I, I definitely appreciate it, man. Thank you. Uh, let's find the next one. Uh, from Heart's Demise. I think that's how you would say that, right? Uh, have you guys always had, or have you always had a fascination with things, uh, vintage antique res or restoration? I hope everything you, uh, is okay over there with the weather. Love you guys. And, uh, love you too. Thank you. Um, for the five. Um, yeah, I, I think I've had a fascination with like older things for a very long time. Like, uh, I've told this story before. I was really into the Titanic as a kid, like seven, eight, nine. Uh, my aunt had a school project and she bought the little uh, VHS tape with Robert Ballard from 87, Finding the Titanic. And that was the most fascinating thing to me. Like, I, I don't know, I just liked it a lot. And like, I really liked the Scooby-Doo cartoons as a kid as well. Like the, uh, where are you Scooby-Doo, the first ones. And so if you look at all those like old backgrounds and stuff, they're all old Second Empire houses or spooky houses. It's always Victorian stuff. I always thought that stuff was cool. Like, who wouldn't want to live in a mansion? Spooky or not, like, it's so cool. It's so beautiful. Um, and the same thing with, like, the Titanic, like, the the way they put things together. I thought, like, that's, like, the the height of craftsmanship, right? Um, and how lucky were these people to live in a world where things were so pretty all the time? Um, so I, I think I'm, from a very, you know, young age, I was really into things like that. And um, uh, my, my grandma had this old um, kerosene lamp that I thought was like the coolest thing ever. It's probably from, you know, probably 1890. It was probably about from this age. Um, and you know, I, I don't know, I just, I just liked old things. Like they felt like they had more weight and more value to them because they were like, they were part of somebody else's life before you. And they were built so well that they made it from that other person's life to yours. You know, it was, I don't know. They've, they've, I've always had an interest in these things. I'm not even exactly sure why. My family, uh, at least on my mom's side, doesn't, um, have uh, like they like old things but it's not it's not the same thing it's not the same like i guess level of respect that i have um but yeah you know i, I from a pretty young age i really liked old stuff <laughs> caleb made the snow go away the snowfall is delaying my new ccm hockey skates from being shipped to the store yeah, that, that's, that's a problem. But, you know, as soon as you get those new skates on, they're going to hurt your feet for, like, three weeks. So maybe it's best they don't show up quite yet. Um, that's the kind of skates I wear, by the way. I mean, I have goalie skates, but they're, they're some CCM tacks. Um, Second Empire <laughs> Strikes Back snowed in Hoth. Yeah, yeah, it did. So, I mean, there's a Star Wars reference there, I guess. Don't do it, Caleb. Those people are impossible to trust me. Oh, oh, the, the planning form people. Yeah, I, or historical people. Yeah, I mean, uh, even with the historic tax credits we've had, uh, we've had, hadn't had much of any problems. Um, I think the one thing that they were talking about was like the maid stairs or like, um, how do you know if it was shellac on the maid stairs and I'm like because I stripped it and there was shellac behind it like oh okay so that was the only like weird little hiccup we had it took like you know 10 minutes to, to convince them that it was shellac so we're good there uh a real fire in the fireplace looks very historically authentic but unfortunately it's not good for the health I said particles get into the air into the lungs cause health. I mean, yeah, it, it's like with anything, right? Like like smoking or anything like that, like inhaling, you know, what essentially is just smoke into your lungs is never a good thing. Um, 
That being said, I think if you did it like once a year, it wouldn't be a terrible thing or, you know, once a month in the winter probably wouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, but there is also the problem with, the, I mean, because these, these two parlors, the having wallpaper made for these is going to be exceedingly expensive and wallpaper is not the easiest thing to clean and you can't use vinyl wallpaper because it doesn't breathe you have to use actual paper on these walls uh, so it can't be like the easy clean system or anything over here um so essentially yeah if you get carbon from any kind of fire on that or on the ceiling oh man it would be such a pain to fix um so yeah fire's probably not gonna happen often if ever I, i'm not sure having something that's faux in there like an little electric thing or something that's not a problem we could probably figure that out but uh anything else you know it's a little little rough uh, Hello, Caleb. This is John from Bethel, Missouri. Have you looked into the National Trust for Historic Preservation? They have many useful sources for uh, restor or many useful sources of information for restoration efforts. I believe I've looked into that very slightly, but not a hundred percent yet. Um, you know, I, I try to use as many things as I possibly can. Um, you know, but you just kind of try to figure it out. <laughs> Snoopy snacks, cookies. Kim's on one over there. bucks jerry man you don't have to do that i mean i, I really appreciate the 50 bucks but you, you don't have to do that like ah oh, thank you thank you um i can't tell you how pleased i am to follow a young person that is so enthusiastic about old things many things for the hours of entertainment keep up the spirit i know you will i will thank you oh you guys are always 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 too nice i don't know how i Ugh, deserve to be so lucky <laughs> to have such an amazing group of people who care so deeply about what I'm doing. So thank you guys. Oh, every once in a while the whole chat just jumps and I lose where I was. <laughs> oh, there you go from the Toronto Maple Leaf for Nah, Caleb. I got the CCM Ripcord 90s. They fit amazingly. No break in period. Well, hey, if, if you got no break-in period, that's fine. All I know is all the guys in the locker room consistently complain, uh, especially after Christmas. Everybody's girlfriend, for some reason, got them a new pair of skates, and so they've all been complaining. <laughs> um, yeah, hopefully, John and Kim are helping you guys with some of the questions that I miss. Um, they're both here in the chat, so uh, I'm sure you guys already all know that, but... Um, and again, I apologize for missing anybody's questions whatsoever. I'm, you know, you try. <laughs> um, some of us are living th via you and Kim. Well, f feel free to do that for sure. Live through us. Um, uh, you know, I try to, try to make it as fun for you guys as I can, you know? I love getting your Patreon postcards. Silly husband thought it was from our teen nephew with the same spelling. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and yeah, I think the postcards are really cool. Uh, they're just a fun thing. The, uh, the Valentine's Day one will be heading to you guys shortly. So that should be pretty fun. We found an old Valentine's Day card. Uh, yeah, I think, I think it's cute. Uh, actually, John found it and I kind of cleaned up some of the edges and stuff. That way it looks nice for you guys. And so I think it'll be fun. A bit of a water break. James Black, man, you make my day. Well, you make my day, James. <laughs> Jesse, you and Kim are amazing people. Thanks for being, uh, being great and bringing life back into the home. We're all rooting for you. Uh, we know you'll be successful and love watching your journey. Yeah, for, thank you so much, by the way, Jess. And yeah, yeah. I mean, we're 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 definitely gonna make this work. It's just gonna be a slow process. Um. But, you know, nothing in worth life doing is usually fast or cheap or easy or any of it. Um, at least nothing that you feel very accomplished with at the end of the day. And so, you know, when we finally do climb this mountain, Kim and I, I think 
you know, the, the feeling of accomplishment and, 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 and all this amazing stuff that we've when it, been able to do with you guys, I think as well, like this kind of happened all as a community. I think it's going to be, if not the most satisfying thing in my life, um, definitely one of them. I mean, this whole project, I mean, even in its current state and with the current amount of things that are happening is, is, has to be one of the highlights of my life. I can't imagine it not being. So, uh, it's going to be awesome. And we, we thank you guys so much for being along the ride. Like, I, I still blows my mind that so many of you guys, um, I don't know, care, care so deeply about something like this. So it's just awesome. Penny Neal, personally, I think $50, well worth the price to a front, uh, huh. <laughs> personally, I think $50 is well worth the price of a front row seat to history in the making. Well, thank you, Penny. Um, well, history in the remaking. <laughs> history in the striking back or something. I don't know. <laughs> Lars from Mars. Roses are red, violets are blue. I'm restoring a house. Would you like to come strip the paint while I insulate the loft? <laughs> it's a good one. I like that. Uh, Jamie C. New York. Are you going to do any giveaways? We would love a part of the old wallpaper. Uh, do you mean like, uh, the, some of the original wallpaper? Um, cause I can't give that out. Uh, that being said, if you want the illustrator file or if any of you guys want the illustrator file that I made for that paper, you can have it. Um, I think giving more patterns to people to be able to restore their own projects is more than enough payment for that. More houses, get it out. Um, and you guys, again, you guys given me so much. That's free for anybody who wants it. Um, uh, in the description of all the videos, there's email there. If you guys want the file, uh, send an email over and we'll shoot you over the Illustrator file. Manipulate it, do what you want with it. It's yours. Um, so, you know, if, if that's what you want. But uh, the actual scraps, I have so very little of it and I want to keep it for posterity of the house. So it stays with the house. If I had more pieces of it, I would, I would send one off to you, but I, I just don't have very much of it uh, in general, so. And yeah, I do want to do more giveaways. Currently, right now, it's like, um, you know, like I have certain furniture that was left here in the house that I've been trying to, to give to people because I don't want it to a, end up in the trash because most of it's fairly nice or antique. It's just not the right style for our house. Um, or like smaller things that we find. Like I, I do want to give more things back, but it'll be like architectural pieces that I find. Um, like we have a contractor friend who, uh, when they start ripping apart a house because that's what the person wants done with the house, she calls me up and then architectural pieces uh, find their way to me. Uh, that's where most of the wood outside came from and things like that. Um, and we were able to get a, a few chandeliers recently. And um, I might try to give them out to the group at some point because I don't know which ones will work with the house. But the ones that don't, I want to offer up to my neighbors first because they're in my neighborhood and I would like to help them out first. Uh, no offense to anybody here, but, you know, you got to, you got to, I, I hope pieces I pull out of houses in St. Louis stay in St. Louis. And if they can't, I do want them uh, to possibly go out to some, some people like you um, because, uh, well, you guys have given me so much. I would feel like a fool if I didn't offer that up to you guys. And in the process, we both together or all together save more pieces of history, which is ideal. They had the audacity to, uh, Kim to smoke in your house. Oh, I think that's, uh, Kim's talking about, well, Kim's talking about what she's talking about in there. <laughs> uh, MX mechanic, are you warm in the house? Do you have a bed? Of the journey you've been sharing with us. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fairly warm in here. It's between 60 and 65, so it's not like, you know, hot summer weather or anything like that. Um, and the radiator's doing, the radiators are doing a fairly decent job of keeping it warm-ish in here. Um, I do have a bed-ish. Uh, it's the fainting couch that I showed off in one of the videos last week. Um, but I've just taken some cushions from some of the other chairs and put it on top of it. Uh, and there's a, uh, there, cause the springs were coming out of it and it's not perfect. Um, and then I laid some fernie pads on top of that and then I have a blanket and a pillow. Uh, but it, but it'll work. I'm not too terribly concerned about it. I know it'll be fine. Um, 
me see here. I think somebody said, uh, right before it jumped, how are you liking the snow? Uh, I'm okay with it. I mean, it definitely creates uh, very pretty scenes. Um, you know, like I've been out there a bit. That's why my cheeks are a bit red from being outside, kind of moving some snow and, and also getting some footage for you guys for uh, this upcoming week. So there's some pretty cool stuff uh, with snow. Um, I, I play ice hockey, so I, I like cold, obviously. Um, so yeah, not too bad. Did you sell that console radio? Oh, no, 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 no. I think um, the console radio you're speaking of, at least if it's the one I'm thinking of, um, I think it's probably from like the 60s. Um, there was a lady who wanted it and we just gave it away. Um, you know, we, we list things occasionally, um, not for money. Again, it was for a giveaway, but uh, it was most of the inside of that was kind of ripped apart. But uh, it was somebody who was planning on putting it back together. So we're glad it went to a good home. Ooh. Lucy's log, number one fan. I don't understand the pairs. Oh, <laughs> Lucy, thank you. Um, well, what, what's going on with, with YouTube and the pairs? They're really cute. I like them. I just don't know why pairs. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you so very much. Haha, <laughs> sleeping on the fainting couch. Got visions of you fainting onto now. I've been swooned onto the couch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's borderline comfy. It, it's not the worst thing in the world. I've definitely slept in way worse things. Like if you've slept in a car, it's worse than this. Um, so, I mean, it's not terrible, but I mean, it, I, it's not as comfy as my bed, you know. <laughs> I hope to God something goes bump in the night while you're there tonight. LOL. Uh, I mean... Probably not, but I'll let you know if it happens. <laughs> I don't know why you're hoping for that, though. <laughs> you must clutch your pearls before you swoon. Oh. <laughs> um. oh, they're automatically the super stickers. You see, Kim knows all about the, the YouTube stuff, about the pears and stuff, I guess. But I like the pears. They're cute. Um... The fire, or you can get one of the fireplace inserts with the glass doors. Um, I, I hear you there, but again, aesthetically, I don't think that works. It would just have to be like one of the like the individual things. I don't even need it to output heat. I would just need it to look like a log, kind of, or look like ideally coal. Um, but again, it's something I'm too terribly worried with at the moment. Kim has become tech savvy. She's much more tech savvy with the um, social media stuff than I am. Like I, I know Photoshop, Illustrator, uh, InDesign, uh, Premiere. So I, I know like all the editing software and stuff like that well enough. Um, at least creative software because I'm an artist, but I don't know about that. Do you have heat now? Yes. The, uh, boiler is going and the radiators are working. So we have the old steam heat, just like the, the Ramones. We are generating steam heat here. What is your favorite room in the house? Um, I, I think I have to say the, the formal parlor. Uh, the, so the front of the house with the shutters and all that, I think it has to be my favorite. I think primarily because of the shutters. Like, I don't know, just the way they fold up and the fact that they put new windows in there and they're not gone is so amazing to me. Uh, secondly, I mean, I don't know, it's hard. Like, I, it, it's kind of one solid thing, right? So it's hard to kind of pry apart you know, it's like, what finger do you like in your hand? It's like, oh, well, I kind of need them all, you know? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I like all the rooms a lot. Um, uh, you know, I especially would really like these two parlors as soon as I can find the photos of the original mantle so I can get these remade because that's really important to me. How many vacant houses are on your block? Um, I think just... Well, the one over there is being worked on, so it's technically vacant right now, but she's working on it. Um, there's one between me and the Sheehan Mansion. The Sheehan Mansion is a, a big mansion on the corner, uh, much bigger than my house, at least double the size of my house. Um, 
and they're the ones who kind of set up this whole neighborhood. They're like the founders of the neighborhood. Um, and it is technically vacant, but somebody lives in the uh, carriage house. Uh, again, the carriage house in itself is huge um, and older than the house itself. Um, but uh, so I think there's only two vacant house or vacant houses on the on the street that being said there are a lot of lots on the street where where houses used to stand or just aren't there anymore but they're technically not vacant they just don't exist uh the other side of the street is different i think there's only two houses over there and the block is solid all the way down i think that block is only missing one house uh where mine is like missing eight probably um Pretty things require very special cleaning techniques. Yeah, most of them do, for sure. Like the alabaster bust, you, I think you have to get like ammonia and clean it with. I've kind of looked into that. Um, but that's okay. If you care enough, you'll clean it, right? And uh, I happen to care enough, so that's good. Um, uh, um, Jan 2020, did you check with uh, the City Hall for photos? Um, no, I mean, a lot of things going on right now because of the, the, the virus. Um, most places aren't getting back to us as as well as we'd like uh like the library for those photos we got of like the pocket watch and mr brown's personal tools um it, it took over a year to get those um people are just they're just backed up and because of everything that's happened over the past two years now um things just don't happen as quickly as as you would like um city hall also i, I don't know that they would have them i think they would be in like the uh, the historical society here in town would we'd have a better shot. Uh, in fact, the 1896 photo we have of the house with the family out front, the one that's you know the you know the logo for the channel essentially. Um, that house or that photo was from them. It's from the historical society. So, are you going to get old books that were published in the 1800s and 1900s for the library? Uh, actually, I've been given a lot of books uh, from that era uh, to the point now where I've probably got a third of what I would need to fill out an entire library with one or not like an entire like public library but like a personal one for like a house like this um, it's some really cool ones too like I have two uh, Jules Verne's books I think I have uh, Around the World in 80 Days and uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea uh, I think they're published in 1896 each of them they're really pretty like obviously super intricate on the covers uh, so really stoked on those and a bunch of really, a, a, a bunch of other really beautiful books. Um, now, of course, I don't know all the authors. It's impossible to know every author for every book. Um, but I think as far as like a comprehensive library, there's some really cool stuff there. Uh, how many different types of wood have you discovered in the house? Um, well, there's the pine that's everywhere. It's either pine or fir. I'm not entirely sure what every single piece is. And I can't tell the difference between pine and fir. I have no idea how one would go about that. Um, they look extremely similar. So either pine or fir, and we have a lot of that in the house. Um, there is oak, um, and I believe it's white oak, and that's the stairway, and then the pocket doors in the stairway and the entryway, and, and all the trim is all oak there. Um, the door that separates the front hallway from the back hallway, that's oak as well. Um, and then the two parlors are both cherry, um, and actually the parlor or the the doors that go into the parlor are half oak and half cherry. They've been slotted on each side with about a quarter inch veneer on each side. So it's a really thick veneer. Um, so that's how they've done that here. Um, there's technically walnut in the maid stair because the null post in that area is walnut. And so is the top handrail. Um, I'm sure there's other little bits of wood that I just, I don't know. Like, you know, here in the floor, there's the parquet floor in, um, in this parlor that I'm in right now. And it probably has four different varieties of wood on it. I, I think there's mahogany um, and some other stuff. The, the new windows I put in are mahogany. So five, six different types of wood. Um, mostly everything's pine. Uh, all the doors like that curly pine and stuff. So, um, Let me see here. Where are we at? Oh, for pears. <laughs> Kelly, thank you. <laughs> and also thanks for, the, thanks for the laugh. That's pretty good. <laughs> Um, you look tired. Well, I mean, I am tired. I, I did work today in here. Um, we're getting the bathroom back together, but you know, that's how it goes. Um, 
Are you going to put replacement finials up? Um, actually, I, th I think you're talking about the cresting, so it's like the the rails that look like a fence back on top of the house. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll probably we're going to put those up at some point, but I don't want to just buy any cresting for the top. Um, or some people call it a widow's walk, but I think the widow's walk technically has to be a place where a widow could walk. And since it's on the top of the roof, I don't think that's what they call that. Uh, the best term I've heard is cresting. Um, to have that made, though, I literally would have to have somebody sculpt it out um, in the exact dimensions I would need it and then have it cast in, in iron um, or potentially probably steel. Maybe it's best to be in steel now. Um, and then I don't know about – somebody said something about lightning rods. Yeah, I don't exactly know what they did with those in the context of this house or the ones in like Lafayette Square. I'm not 100% sure how that all works. Um, and I mean, if you put a lightning rod up there, I mean, you obviously have to ground it somewhere too. And so how does one go about that? I'm not sure. Um, but since I'm putting metal on the roof, I have to have some sort of lightning rod, I think. Um, we get plenty of storms here in St. Louis, so it's a good idea, I'm sure. Um, but I'm just not sure how it goes. Um, and all that's, again, quite a ways away. Um, obviously, I want the, the queen of the house I own to have its or have her crown again, but I, I just don't know when that happens. Um, firstly, I need to fix her hat because her hat's in a rough, rough shape. So the mansard is definitely first, and then we'll worry about the cresting once I you know live here. I have a functional kitchen. Like the bedrooms upstairs are mostly done, and then I'll kind of circle back to that when money's good and, and things like that. Uh, are you going to make a stencil from the copied wallpapers? I know we try to freehand it. No, I'm going to stencil it, um, the free the wallpaper, um, but I'm going to stencil it and then I'm going to draw out the stencils and then hand paint that. So it's a mixture of both. Um, even in that wallpaper sample, that little clipping I have, things aren't perfect. They're not all straight and you can see imperfections in it. So I think having it be a little imperfect is actually ideal. Um, you know, it would be easier to, say, spray paint it or something like that, which is something I'm actually good at. It's something I did for a long time. Um, you know, I can cut and make a stencil look that you wouldn't you wouldn't understand it's a stencil. <laughs> um, so I'm actually, I did that for a long time. Like I was, you know, like a graffiti artist and stuff. And so multi, you know, 28 layer stencils aren't a big deal to me to make them look really well. Um, but, you know. But uh, we'll make it happen. Oh, wait, how did that go back up? <laughs> Her fabulous hat. Um, also, all right, what about smoke detectors? Is that allowed in a house? Um, mm. Hold on, I'm trying to, another hand, okay. Any vandalism or crime you've encountered? Uh, no, not so far. Um, there's definitely, there's a hole in the window in the kitchen from Iraq or something from back in the day. Uh, but that was here beforehand. Uh, nobody's really done or messed with anything here so far. Uh, I think the worst I've seen is like, I came in one day and there was a broken bottle on the sidewalk, like a beer bottle, like you know, big deal. Um, so none of that or anything like that. No, uh, no, no, no problem so far. I mean, you know, like knock on wood, right? But nothing so far. Oh. We had, uh, we have lightning rods, they have a wire that runs in the ground, disperse the electricity. Yeah, I, I mean, I've seen them and I, I, I kind of understand how they work. I just don't know what goes into it. I'm sure there's some specifics I just don't understand. Um, uh, the guy that's gonna be repairing my Mansard has, um, well, I've seen him mess with them once or twice uh, cause he films and shoots photos of a lot of things. Um, and I've seen him mess with, with those and run the wire, but I just don't know the specifics of it. And when we're talking something like electricity, you have to know the specifics of it so especially with that much voltage
Um, I want to see the snow outside. Okay. <laughs> oh, let me get it off here. You guys are on a phone, so it's a little easier. So um, how well you're going to be able to see it out there, I don't know, but I'm going to try. You're live. Okay. And we're back. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Remind me not to move my phone ever again, because that was a terrible idea. <laughs> that did not work out well. <laughs> Okay, so everybody good? Are we good? Did I lose everybody? Did I drop everything? There's a wrought iron customizer in Old Town Floors and I just happened to see it one day. Oh, okay, Kelly, that's, that's not bad, that's great. Oh, we're still here, cool. Um. Clover field camera work. Yes, exactly. Uh, typically when you guys see me shoot, I am actually on a gimbal because I try to make everything nice and smooth at least best I can. Uh, and then I made people sick at the beginning because I was moving it too fast. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't like shaky camera, but this is a live stream. It's, I guess, a little different. Was this how you imagined you would be spending your first night in the house, Caleb? I mean, not necessarily, but then again, when I first bought the place, I didn't imagine the YouTube channel would be a thing. Um, like, I'd only mildly even considered doing a YouTube channel at that point, thinking it might be cool to, like, show relatives of mine and maybe somebody could learn something from a mistake I made or something like that, you know? Um, but no, this is not exactly how I, I played it out in my head, that's for sure. <laughs> Um, also for anybody who wants to see snow, like I, uh, because this is my first, you know, night in the house anyways, I, I have done a little bit of filming and I'll, I'll be doing an episode of that. So I'll, I've been outside with the camera filming the snow. So don't worry, something will be coming out so you guys can see the snow <laughs> and how it looks on the house and all that stuff. The roof iron work is called ridge cresting. Yeah, that, that's what I've, I've always heard it called. Lanning's foundry in Scotland reproduces patterns from the Sar Saracen uh, foundry old catalog. They can ship or possibly recommend a U.S. manufacturer. Um, from what I know, there was one local manufacturer who made, like an iron work manufacturer, that made a lot of the cresting that was around here. Um, I just don't know. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. And I don't, I don't have a, a copy of their catalog, so I couldn't match it up to the stuff that's on my house. But I know it's the one that uh, Eric, the guy who works on a lot of these uh, mansards, he knows the name of that, that, that place. And I think he has a catalog. And so I was thinking about maybe trying to look it up there and see if I can find the, the thing, you know. Um, what will you keep your drinks cold in? Oh, the 1920s refrigerator. I mean, it's really cold outside, so I've just kind of been putting things in the snow and then coming back and grabbing them. Uh, there's also, I mean, some of the rooms in the house don't have um, radiators, so they get a little bit colder. Um, Kim's craft room is one of those rooms, so I've got some things up there. And then I've got a little cooler outside that I've been putting some of my cold food in. Uh, not to keep it cold, just to keep, you know, critters out of it. I've seen a, a few possums and some raccoons walking around last night, so. Before I left and went home, I'm like, well, you know, if I'm going to do this, I probably shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> I can see a little child peek on the stairs in the mirror. Please watch this live back. I mean, maybe. Is he, is he right there? Um, I don't, you know, other than uh, Warren, uh, who was an infant when he died in this house, um, I mean, I think they had had the house for nine days, and Warren was, oh, I don't know, six months old. Um, there hasn't been a child that I'm aware of anyways that has that's passed away here. So, um I don't know why there would be a child spirit here. Um, there's others. Uh, the veterinarian died here. The veterinarian's wife died here. Um, of the Browns. So I don't, I don't think any, like, because um, even Charles S. Brown Jr., which I always thought died here, I actually believe died at Hall's house, which was next door. 
Um, because the Browns were out of town, I think they were in Europe when he passed away. Um, so I don't know of any of the Browns other than Warren, the baby that passed away here. Uh, Mr. Brown died at his uh, place in Huntley, which is the house he built after this one. Uh, Mr. Brown's wife died there. His uh, second oldest son, Alfred, died there. And uh, Lillian, the daughter, the oldest, um, uh, she died, I think, um, well, she married um, a guy named Funston, the last name Funston. And so she died wherever they were living when they were together. So um, not very many Browns here. Uh, but I, like I said, the veterinarian, he died here. His wife died here. And I think one of their daughters died here. Um, all of old age. So even if there's like spirits, I don't, you know, like there's no murders or, you know, really terrible things that have happened here. Things have always been pleasant from what I know. So. Um, Eden's Paranormal. Just watch it back, please. Oh, I, I mean, I can't watch it back now. <laughs> I'm doing a live stream, so. Uh, the vet's name was uh, Dr. Joseph T. Yeneman. Um, and yeah, he, um, he ran a, another practice as well, but he also, um, uh, ran a practice in the basement as well. So he, he had like a, a proper office for veterinary work, but he also did smaller things here at the house. Um, so the room downstairs with all the pretty tile work was actually where he, he ran some of the vet stuff. Uh, and the cool thing is too, uh, oh, where are they? Over oh, there. The, the little dog tags that we found in the yard from 1928 and 29. So we got five of these little things, but they're little rabies vaccine car, uh, tags for, for dogs or cats. And uh, he must have dropped a sack of them because five of them were found in an area like this. So I must have dropped a sack. And then uh, my buddy Phil, metal detecting, found them in the yard. So a cool little thing that ties the back into the house. Caleb is no scared of no ghost. I mean, no, I not really. I mean, you know, I'm not a hundred percent. Like I said, I'm skeptical. I don't, I don't know. Um, but I think the thing that's weird is, especially with these these Second Empire houses, everybody really wants them to be haunted for some reason. They just want it. It's not even necessarily rational. Like, there's plenty of older houses, like cottages or log cabins or you know, settlers' houses, and none of those are ever seen as like. Nobody ever gets the question is, is it haunted? Is it haunted? Whereas because my house has been featured in things, like I said before, like, like Scooby-Doo or like Psycho or like, uh, you know, Munsters or Adam's Family, like they're all Second Empire houses. They're all Victorian and they're all Second Empire. So everybody, I think, instinctively reacts because our culture has told us, you know, so often that, that these houses must, there must be something sinister beneath the surface or something. And I, I mean, I don't know. I just don't, I, I don't a hundred percent buy it. I think these houses are gorgeous um, and, and overstated. And I don't, I don't find a Victorian styling in, in the way I think people like, like see like, um, what do you call it? Like, like the Adams family. I don't, I don't see it, that aesthetic being the same aesthetic as actual Victorian. It's, it's a fantasy. So I don't know. I just don't, uh, it just doesn't bug me. I don't know if, if and if there are ghosts, Hey man, they've, they're, they're here before me. So, you know, as long as they don't cause me no harm, I'll cause them no harm. What? Kim is texting me and telling me somebody's trying to be mean to my, our buddy, Jake in New Zealand. Somebody's bullying him for being into history, which makes no sense. Jake, don't listen to those people. Not worth your time anyways, buddy. Uh, I think everybody at some point in their life probably gets bullied a little bit. I certainly did here and there. Um, but like what you like. Don't, don't worry about what anybody else says about anything, man. You enjoy the things you enjoy because you enjoy them. And I think if you let them destroy this, this thing that you like, then they win. Don't, don't do that, man. Just enjoy what you enjoy. Um, life will be a lot, a lot less wonderful if you let people take things away from you that you enjoy. So keep it going, buddy. And don't worry about nobody, man. They don't matter. I think it's also about the spiritualism era in the U.S. I mean, that's true, too. There's, there's definitely a lot of things like Ouija boards and things like that came around. And people were... Um, well, death was treated a very different way in the Victorian era. Like, we get the word funeral parlor from parlors like mine. Like this one. Um, 
you know, and all the, the weird stuff about how you would, you know, cover your mirrors in your house, like, or, you know, the idea of a good death and all of this stuff. Like, there's, there's a lot of uh, taboo and, and, and things changing and people trying to figure out how they actually feel about death in this era, which is, which is actually extremely interesting. Um, or like, you know, the, I, the common practice of death masks and death photography. Um, it's, it, it is actually all really fascinating. Um, but none of it scares me. It, it, it sure it's creepy, but it doesn't, you know, it doesn't scare me. Um, it, again, it might be, it might be different if I knew something that like really heinous happened here. Like, I don't know, some ax murder or something, but, but no, I mean, I think people really lived, just lived their life here. And I, I think it's with anything, right? Like any place, any, any, any thing, right? People had great times with it and they had awful times with it. Um, but I think mostly here, it was just people living their lives, you know, their day to day, the, the, the joy and the excitement. And of course the loss and the pain and like, it's everything, right? It's, it's the mixture. It's the yin, yang, yang, the spice of life. It's all of it. And, and this house has experienced many generations of that. And I find that more fascinating than frightening. So just, you know, my two cents, I suppose. Caleb, it like the RMS Queen Mary said they've been haunted, but it all, it's all made up by Disney. I mean, potentially. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've actually been to the Queen Mary a few times. Um, yeah, Kim has as well. It's a pretty cool place. And again, I, uh, I would just wander the ship, uh, by myself and into the dark hallways. And I don't know, it's never, it never seemed creepy. Plus it, the, the, uh, like the mall area of that boat with all the art deco and like, uh, streamlined modern, uh, details. Oh, it's like chef's kiss. Beautiful. Really, really, really pretty place. <laughs> Anthony Ralston, it's the living you need to worry about, not the dead. True. Um, Kelly Estes, can you tell us what a second empire house is? Yes, uh, a second empire house is mostly defined by the mansard roof, which is the very steep pitched slate roof I have on my house above the cornice. Um, it being so steeply pitched and kind of part of the house. So essentially most house, houses have a pitched roof like this um, and you would have like an attic space. And most Second Empire houses, you don't actually have an attic space. The space up there is a actual living space. Um, now, from what I've heard, uh, the reason the mansard roof was designed was as a tax thing because they would, at the time, they were taxing individual floors. But with a Second Empire, you got a third floor that was technically a roof. So you weren't taxed for three floors. You were taxed for two floors and a mansard, which is something different. So uh, at least that's the tale I've heard. Um, uh, some other details that are very like common on Second Empire homes but are not on mine are rounded windows, like arched window ways. Um, mine actually is what they call a Second Empire Italianate kind of mixture. Um, so, you know, a, a lot of Second Empires as well have big towers and turrets and things like that. Almost always square, capped with a mansard. Um, a lot of cresting, which is the wrought iron work on top. Um, but mine is, is a bit more Italianate, so I have squared off windows. Um, I have a lot of Queen Anne details here and there, like some of the pediments over a lot of my windows have like what are sunburst designs. And so it's just these simple lines that kind of make like, like a sunburst design. Um, so yeah, that, that's, I, I hope I'm explaining it well, but that's Second Empire. It's, it's mostly the mansard roof that signs a uh, uh, Second Empire. Yeah, and Italianate's actually pretty closely related. You just basically don't have, it just basically ends at the cornice. Uh, and it's squared up, and then you have more square designs in it. Um, Join late. Can you give us an update on what's happening in the bathroom? Uh, I've been cleaning up a lot of the beadboard because it's all reclaimed stuff. So, of course, everything I bring into this house is reclaimed. And it always takes way more time than it would be to buy something new, but it's better than what you can buy new, so that's why I do it. Um, so I've been cleaning up the beadboard, uh, a lot of weird carbon on that, so it's been trying to lighten the wood back up so the shellac looks nice on it. Um, and then uh, I've almost done with the plaster work as far as getting everything straightened out, and I need to run the entire base layer, or the entire finishing veneer layer. Um, so that's probably going to be happening this week. Uh, I've got all the boards down on the floor to start running the concrete layer so I can uh, fix. And so should uh, should be going quite well.
Thanks for telling Jake that one day Jake will realize that things that they say to him mean nothing. Do your thing and be happy. That hurt. That will hurt them more than anything. Yeah, I mean, and to be honest, who cares if they hurt or don't hurt or do? Jake, buddy. <laughs> yeah, definitely as you get older in life, you realize it just doesn't matter. Uh, you just do the things that make you happy and, um, you know, live the most fantastic, meaningful life that you could possibly live. Uh, in, in, in all your way and all things that mean something to you don't give, you know, you just don't have to care about anybody else. You know, obviously like don't go out and hurt anybody else, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you don't have to care what people think. If something makes you happy, it makes you happy. Why is Kim yelling quilt? Huh? St. Louis is beautiful. I can absolutely agree with that. This is what I've heard too about taxing and mansard roofs. Yeah, I don't know if it's something that happened in France because technically they were um, invented in France. There's a French invention, which is why the house looks French. <laughs> um, but I, I don't exactly know how much validity there is to that story or not. Um. If a spirit is attached to an object and Caleb get, makes giveaways, then somebody can get a spirit together with a lamp or a chair. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, again, I, I don't know. But may, maybe I'm giving away ghosts too. I don't know. <laughs> and maybe some of you guys have given me some ghosts. I don't know. I guess we'll find out tonight. <laughs> Caleb, don't forget the quilt. Um, wait, the, the quilt that was sent in? Um, uh, well, I mean, what, what about it? I, I love that quote, by the way. It's so amazing. Um, have you found replacement radiators? Uh, I did really early on and I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't get them. Um, but it, it, it's hard to find a group of people who want to be like, you know, like you need like two or three people to come in and help you pick up a radiator. Uh, they're really heavy. Um, especially like the bigger ones or the, the longer ones. They're, they're, absurdly heavy for as small as they are um but yeah so i i should have went and get them but I, I just didn't have the manpower at the time and i'm like i'll just deal with it later and then they were gone so <laughs> living well and being happy is probably the best revenge it's not a rem song living well is the best revenge i think it's called <laughs> Uh, what room are you in? I am in the uh, second parlor or um, the drawing room. I actually, I think I found out this is what this is called is the drawing room. Um, it's so you have the former parlor or formal, sorry, parlor up front. And then uh, past that you would have the more informal like private space. Essentially what we think of as the living room. Uh, this is what this room is. So uh, was the house originally lit with gas lamps? Uh, Mostly, yes, but coal gas, so not kerosene. Um, but fascinatingly enough, um, there's uh, there was a insulated wire between the um, between the uh, medallion and the lath and plaster before. So that means that they had to have run wire before they actually put the medallion up. Um, so essentially what that means is that this house originally had electric in at least a few rooms. Uh, I believe the entryway and the two parlors here, uh, were always, always had electricity, uh, even in 1890, um, which was extremely rare, but the neighborhood that this is in used to be called Millionaire's Row for a reason. Um, this was a very wealthy area and that allowed them to probably be able to do that because I'm sure they had a very local, small, um, power plant just to fuel the neighborhood um, because back then they were running DC electric and DC electric couldn't go very far. Um, so the power plant had to be probably fairly close around here. So, What do you think about the old Sears? Oh, the Sears uh, kit homes. Uh, what do you think about old Sears homes? Uh, the kind that came as a giant kit. I think that would actually be really cool. Like how cool would it be to like go to the train station and pick up your house and, and move it out to the site. I think they're really cool. And I'm, I've, I've seen a lot of groups that like uh, really cherish those houses and, and show people what they would have originally looked like from the catalog and all that stuff. And 
I think because there is uh, so much information out there on them, the way to restore them and put them back together, I, I think is, is, is much easier, or at least more plainly, plain to see. Like you knew what the house looked like when it came uh, you know, off the train cars, you know, and, and when they put it back together. I guess you could have some customization of whoever built the house. If you built the house yourself, you can kind of adjust things. But um, I think it's definitely cool and, and certainly a, a nifty little part of uh, history, right? Like how more, much more convenient could you have you buy a house from a cattle hog? Like that's really cool. Uh, are you using radiators? We had one in every room, but they fail. Uh, yes, we're using radiators, uh, having any problems. Uh, I know um, a lot of the people who have like bigger problems with, like radiator, especially older radiators, are usually using the water type, hot water. These are steam. Uh, so if mine fail, you get a little bit of steam come out. Like it's not like you flood a room. So as far as like a historical house, these are actually probably better as far as um, if something breaks, they don't destroy the whole house. So... I guess I guess my grandfather's watching me because he just sent me a text. <laughs> he said my, my great grandfather had one of those Sears kit houses, which is awesome. I had no idea about that. So, uh, Grandpa, I don't know if you're in the chat or if you're just texting me, but thanks. <laughs> my my great grandfather was an awesome, awesome man. Uh, I miss him dearly. It's cool that he had the, a house like that, though. I didn't know. So so I guess I have I have historic president in my house for Sears kit homes. So there we go. Um, oh, it's Linda here. Hi, Kim. Ready for another quilt? <laughs> Linda, we love your quilt. That is one of the prettiest things we've, we've got in the house. It's just, I, I, I respect the art of what you do so much. It's so cool. Um, Old house and have you seen an old home, home encyclopedia? It's one of the large thick books that had all you didn't know about how to run a home during the era, even how to house plans. Uh, no, I have books that have like Victorian house plans in them, uh, like I think about three or four of them. Uh, some of them are like come in one big book, um, and then I have a, a reprint of one that's from the seventies that I can't find on Amazon because it's from the seventies. Uh, but it's a reprint of like 1880s books like that, but uh, not an old house encyclopedia. It'd definitely be something cool to find, but I haven't seen that. Um, uh, Tiny Fairy, uh, thank you for the five. Um, again, you guys don't have to do that, but uh, uh, do you ever get overwhelmed with all the work? If you do, how do you deal with it? Uh, love you guys. You know, um, with the work on the house itself, no. Um, it's, like I said, it, it is actually fairly therapeutic for me to come up here and do it. It's kind of how I work on myself. You know, you, you put on a podcast or some music or sometimes just work in silence and you just think about life and, and, and the way you want to do something. or I don't know. It's just, it's therapeutic for me. I never had a problem with the actual physical work. Now, to be honest with you guys, with the YouTube stuff, yeah, it does get a little chaotic and it does get... Uh, to be a lot sometimes because there's so many messages coming in and and there's there's this happening and there's Instagram and there's YouTube and and I it's hard for me sometimes because I feel like I want to give every person an individual touch and with the amount of you there are it is almost impossible to do so and so I think I work myself up because I feel like in some ways I, I can't give everybody you know, a, a hello, or, or, or I can't get to every question, or I can't get to every email, I can't, I can't get to everything, and I feel so bad, because again, you guys give me so much, just by watching these videos, you guys give me loads, like, this speeds up the process of me saving this house, you guys are, 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 are helping me achieve this, um, you know, by giving me your time, by giving me your ears, by, by, by enjoying it, and, and I'm glad that it gives you guys something too, so, I think it's super beneficial, but I think the only time I ever really get worked up is, is I get too overwhelmed by all of the things happening outside of the house, and then I and then I get down on myself for not being here to to work more because I, I really enjoy that, and I think uh, it, it, I have to find a better balance at some point. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, you know, I, I I've never been happier, so it, you know, things are good. Mark Davis, cheers and cheers back to you. I'll, 
my, my fine Evian water. <laughs> so cheers, Mark, and thank you for the 10 men. Thank you so much. Uh, Kim, I bet you'll <laughs> think that stripping will never end, but it will one day in the far future. Uh, actually, an interesting thing I found, uh, and I'll be talking about in the video this week too, uh, the trim that I was stripping last night upstairs uh, that goes around the uh, bathroom doorway, which didn't exist because it used to be the butler's pantry and it used to come from the kitchen, uh, on the back of it uh, has the name Yeniman on it, which was the veterinarian's name. So it was obviously when they made that wood and or that trim in 1923 because it's replacement trim to match what's here originally in the house. Uh, they wrote the doctor who lived here at the time, his name on the back of it. So I, I saw that last night. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. So uh, there'll be footage of that in this video or in next week's or next Monday's video because um, I thought that was really amazing. It was another way to, just like the newspaper, to tie it back to 1923 to Dr. in the veterinarian who owned the place after Mr. Brown. Um, so little hints like that are so cool. Uh, Lars, don't beat yourself up, Caleb. I doubt anyone is looking for anything back. Certainly not any more than the joy of you give us by letting us see yours and Kim's worthy, worthy project. Well, I mean, I hear you, man, but, you know, I, it's just one of those things. Like, I, I, you, you guys give me a lot. I just want to make sure that I, I, I give, give back what I get. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I just try. Because, uh, I don't know. I'm just bad at getting gifts, I guess. <laughs> I'm fine at giving them. I'm just terrible at receiving them, I suppose. <laughs> Um, uh, how much snow did you guys get? Uh, it's hard to say because it's not consistent out there. There's a lot of drifts and stuff like that. So between four inches and a foot and a half, depending on which part you step into. So, uh, it's kind of interesting. There's a lot of really unique shapes out there in the yard that are pretty cool. So, um, uh, Uh, what can you say to those who avoid St. Louis City to make them feel more comfortable? Um, I, I mean, I'm supposed to be frank. There, there are some parts of St. Louis that are dangerous, um, like pretty much any city. Um, but for the most part, there are so many wonderful neighborhoods and so many cool things that don't exist anywhere else. We have a very unique style of architecture, uh, the city museum. There's, there's all these really amazing attractions, and they're not in places where you're going to have any problems. Um, unless you go out looking for problems, like again, anywhere, you know, if you, I don't know, drive around holding your finger out the window, you might get some funny looks and maybe some people won't be happy with you. But for the most part, I, I think, you know, people are nice here. Things are fairly nice here. Um, the city just gets a bad rap because, uh, I, I think so many people left and it looks more desolate and, and disgusting than it actually is. Um, it, it's like Detroit in a lot of ways. Um, now, I haven't spent a lot of time in Detroit to really know the ins and outs, intricacies of how people are there, what, what goes on necessarily. Um, but I know here, for the most part, um, things are way overblown um, about like, you know, St. Louis being the most dangerous or whatever, when everything's on a ratio here, right? Like, one person gets shot in St. Louis and it would take another... Um, you know, probably 50 to get shot in Chicago before the two are comparable because the population in St. Louis is only 300,000 and Chicago is 4 million. So it's not comparable. So I think so many people talk down about it. I mean, this is a city that lost all of its industry. All of its industry was sent overseas. And we're an industrial city like Cleveland, like uh, Memphis, like, like so many of these, like Detroit. Uh, so much of our industry and so much of our economic structure was sent elsewhere. So, yeah, this city lost population and lost all this stuff, but the people who are still here haven't given up. There's so much, like, positive stuff behind it. I mean, go drive down Lafayette, to Lafayette Square here in St. Louis and, and tell me I'm wrong. Like, tell me how, how, how awful that looks. And that was a place that people were scared to be in in the 70s. So I, I think St. Louis heals by individuals getting involved and, 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 and putting... In, putting forth efforts and, and really 
believing in something and seeing what the next possibility is and, and preaching to the next generation of people here that it's not all doom and gloom and that we can do wonderful things with this. St. Louis is a blank canvas as far as I'm concerned. If you're young and you can't afford to live in New York or LA or you don't want to have to afford the risk or accept the risk of trying to start a business or something there, St. Louis, Cleveland, Memphis, these cities are asking for you and you can take the risk here and be successful. I mean, find me a Victorian house on the East Coast for $65,000, you know, you know, f do, do anything, you know, find a house anywhere in Los Angeles where I used to live. Like, it's just not possible. So these cities, um, they're beautiful. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're worthwhile and you can build yourself an extremely comfortable life here and not have to shell out ridiculous amounts of money to do it, um, you know, I, th I think Missouri is amazing. Um, you know, it's a beautiful state. And I think St. Louis is a beautiful city. Um, and I think if more people come here and start to enjoy it, I think the city gets better. The economy gets better. The, everything fixes itself, right? But people need to need to believe in it again. So uh, I think the, the biggest thing is if you believe it's a good city, it'll be a good city again. And I believe it's a great city. And I want to see it be a great city again. Um, Detroit has heart. They're planning a rebuild. Their downfall was separate planning departments, planning commission, which makes it slower to rebuild. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. Detroit is, is an American icon of a city, and I want to see it back. Um, I feel, I don't know, kind of a kindred spirit to Detroit because um, I can see the decline, the decay there, and I feel it here. So, you know, I, I just, just like St. Louis, I want to see Detroit get better. I want to see Cleveland get better. Um, Memphis actually doesn't look terrible at all. I thought Memphis was a little bit more beat up than it was when I went down there. I really like it. Twist tonight. Uh... The world would be a better place with more Caleb's. I mean, I, I guess so. You know, I want to... Nothing has to be doom and gloom all the time, right? It just doesn't. Um, you know, there's enough hate and, and nastiness and awful stuff in the world than for me to, to, to dwell on it. Like, there's no point in it. It doesn't fix anything. It doesn't make anything better. And so I've always been a, a, a big believer of be the change you want to see. So here I am being the change I want to see. Um, I'm trying to, uh, you know, live my morals. Um, and my, my morals are to, to try to save these neighborhoods, to, to connect with the people who are here, too, and, 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 and bring them into the fold and have them bring me into the fold is more like it. Um, you know, and, and I don't know. I, I think one of my neighbors said it best the other day. He's like, I just try my best every day to love everyone. And I think that's a great moral to live by. Um, that, yeah, I, at some point where I'm going to get that guy on camera because <laughs> he's an amazing man. I guess I don't, I don't want to throw anybody's name out there because I haven't discussed him being on the channel or anything. Um, but he's, he's become a great friend very close. close so. Saw you on KS, KD, or KSDK last week. I think it was KMOV, wasn't it? Uh, the news channel I was on. Um... Uh, I live next to Gary, Indiana, grew up, uh, going to Gary, dads and uncles work there, lost everything when the steel was outsourced to China, the city of Gary is hurting bad and almost said, I've driven through Gary and you're right. I mean, when things went away, well, I mean, what do you do? The jobs aren't here anymore. And so you have to get, you have to make a new creative economy or, or a, a consumer economy, like a service jobs, essentially, you know, um, food and, and shoes or, I don't, you know, I don't know, like, what do, you, what do you do? And so you have to be really creative and you have to figure out what kind of things you can do to, to build your city up, to find more employment and things like that. And these are way bigger questions than I can answer. Um, you know, I'm not an economist. I don't, I, I don't know how to fix these issues. Um, 
And I think it takes more than just one man to sit down and figure all this stuff out as well. Um, but I do hope that more things do pop up. I do hope that more of the population in these cities can uh, can have a better chance at a, at a, at a better life, uh, that we can raise more people out of poverty and things like that. Um, I just don't know how to do it. I think, uh, especially in the Midwest, the uh, the Rust Belt, if you will, is a, is a sad story of, um, of really bad planning and... Um, and the want, the need, and the goal of cheap goods at all costs. Um, and that's why you have things that break every two years, uh, which is unfortunate, which is different with uh, all the old stuff because it was built well and built to last, so. Uh, Toledo is scary bad. I've never been to Toledo, Ohio, so I don't know. I've been to Cincinnati. Cincinnati is wonderful. They've done a fantastic job of preserving that city. Um, but I haven't been really much anywhere else in Ohio. Uh, I want to go more. I have a lot of friends in Ohio, so. Uh, as St. Louis County house values continue to rise, I would imagine that demand for city houses will increase. Uh, the thing is, like, uh, the city houses have increased quite a bit as well. Um, things keep going up kind of everywhere, so. Um, I, I think the whole U.S., I don't think it's it's not risen anywhere. I mean, maybe middle of nowhere, potentially, I, I, but, I, but I don't know. Um, uh, what did Jeff say? Uh, does the vlog channel do that? I haven't subscribed to it. Sorry to say, um, oh. Have you thought about maybe doing a quick vlog style video, visiting a place or two around St. Louis and just talking about how it relates to the historical period of your house? Um, yeah, yeah, Jeff, I, I have. I actually have done a few videos like that. Um, and I wanna do more, but again, it's like what places are open, uh, what buildings do I have access to? I don't wanna just like stand out on the street with a camera, like that's always felt weird to me. Like I don't like filming in public. I think it's odd. I don't like putting people I don't ask on camera either. Um, or strangers on camera, I just find it odd even if they're on the street. Um, but yeah, no, I, I want to tell more of the story of St. Louis itself, uh, of my neighborhood as well, St. Louis Place. Um, I've definitely done little bits of that where I've been invited or I've I've had a way in, like the Campbell House or like uh, Shelly at the Magic Chef Mansion and things like that. And uh, we've definitely discussed that and, and kind of how those buildings somewhat relate to my house. And then, of course, occasionally I get comments like, I don't understand why this guy keeps talking about his house. If he wants to talk about his house, why doesn't he shoot a video about his house? And I'm like, that's what the entire channel is. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, there's there's some cool uh, places we've we've shot, and, and they're on the, the main channel here. True, true. As an introvert, that's tough. And yeah, the YouTube algorithm sometimes punishes experimentation. Oh, oh for sure. I mean, you do something a little weird or you, you put a video out on a, a different day than you usually do and YouTube doesn't like it. The algorithm doesn't like it at all. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I, I, after, as I get comfortable with people and, and being out and comfortable with myself in, the, in front of a camera, I think I'll do more of these things as well. Again, I, I do want to tell the story again of, of my city. I think it's great. Uh, are the Browns buried in Bell Fountain Cemetery? Yes, the Halls and the Browns are both buried in Bell Fountain, uh, along with, and actually next door to Bell Fountain uh, Cemetery is the um, Calvary Cemetery, which is the Catholic Cemetery, and the second owner, Dr. Ginneman, uh, is buried there with his wife and his children. So, Have you been inside the Sheehan house? Has it been restored? I have been inside the Sheehan mansion. It is an absolute wreck, um, and not in a wreck in the way that it's like, falling apart. It's, there's a little bit of that, but it's a wreck in the way that whoever did it had um, modern styling, let's say, and um, they completely destroyed most of the historical items in that house, and it looks awful. Um, so it's kind of a sad day for that one. I, I think it's going to cost a huge amount of money to restore that structure. Um, and not even restore, even to renovate, it's going to cost a fortune. Um, mostly because I mean, even even the roof alone is gonna is, is at least one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and that's if you're using cheap asphalt shing, sing, uh, shingles. If you actually use slate, uh, we got a quote at two hundred fifty thousand. So there's.
I don't know, Justin's texting. <laughs> Uh, Stacy Kelly, I wasn't interested in coming to St. Louis until you started your vlog. Well, I mean, I, I think if you never hear about a place, then then what do you know? It's just the name on a map, right? Um, I bring a face to that name. Um, and, and I think St. Louis is interesting. I, I think a lot of these American cities are interesting. Like, they all have stories and, and interesting tidbits and stuff, right? Like, there's there's always more to a city than, than a name or a museum or something like that. There's always a story there. And I think it's fascinating to get involved into those stories. Um, I just happen to be from St. Louis, and so it's what I care deeply about. Um, you know, lucky for me, it's a, it's a city that I could afford to actually do something like this in. I'll be barely, but, you know, still. Uh... Are you using a bucket or do you have a working toilet yet? I do not have a working toilet yet. And uh, yes, it is bucket. Um, you know, not to be crude or gross, but um, it is what it is. This is a, a you know, a, a under construction house. So, um, Caleb, do you like old cars? Would it be cool if you had a Ford Model T or A in the front of the house taking photo with Kim and <laughs> you and the family? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I think it'd be really rad to have a Model uh, Model A. Model A because you can get, like, the electric starters with them. <laughs> I think at least I put, like, a very, I don't know, like, half a night three years ago research into that. Um, I do like old cars, but I definitely prefer things like 1940s and below. Um, of course, there's, like, you know, some other cars I think are pretty cool. Um, you know, like everybody likes a DeLorean. Everybody likes like the 1969 Corvette Stingray or was it 68 that has like the split back to it, which is really awesome. Um, but yeah, I think a Model A would be really rad or, you know, any, any of the other car companies like the old Oldsmobiles or the Dodge Brothers. I know they were making cars around that time the Model A came out. Um, I think any of those would be fine as well. Any of like the touring cars you put a roof up, I would, I would have it in a heartbeat and, um, I'm not terribly mechanically minded, but I think I could probably figure out something like an A or a T, um, you know, and, and actually figure out how to work on them. I mean, I think most people cut their teeth on how to work on cars by working on those cars back in the day. Um, so I, I think it'd be really awesome to have one and, and, and to understand it truly, know it mechanically in and out. Um, yeah, I think that'd be really rad. And so, yes, I've, I've definitely thought about it. It's been in the back of my head for a while now. What room are you dreading? Um, as far as like working on it, uh, room I'm dreading. I don't, mm. you know, actually the bathroom I'm working on now was a room I was kind of dreading because I'm like, I don't know what, the, what I'm gonna do here. Uh, but then I figured it out fairly quickly and yeah, you just move on, right? Um, and no, nothing's that hard. Things are just that time consuming. Uh, it's more about how much time you wanna give up. Uh, I don't think anything's hard, it just, takes time, you know, like everything. Yes, everything has an exp expiry date on it these days. Nothing is made to last. Yeah, it's true. Uh, do you plan on making or buying older style art to hang on the house? Yes. Uh, I actually have a decent amount of modern art, uh, but that goes in the library because it's like my office, essentially, the library. That, or at least that's how I think about the library. Um, so most of the art will in there will, I mean, it'll be a lot of art in there. Like one of those old photos you see where there's like, you know, paintings from the floor to the ceiling everywhere. That's going to be the library. There's not going to be wall space in that room because I'm going to have art everywhere because that's my one room I can put my modern stuff uh, there and on the third floor. Um, but everything else, yeah, I'm going to try to paint quite a bit of my own stuff to make it um, more cost effective, of course, to have a painter come in and do it. Very expensive. And I happen to be a pretty all right painter myself. Um, I have to kind of learn a bit of the, uh, let's say, like more impressionist style of portraits. Um, so I can get, um, 
some of those going because I think they're they're appropriate for my house. Like Van Gogh was painting in 1890 and uh, Monet and uh, uh, oh, it's been a while since I've thought about impressionist artists, but there's a, there's a bunch of them in the uh, about that era and that's when it really became popular. So I think it'd be kind of cool to do the blockier approach of um, uh, portraits. So uh, that's what I'm gonna start working on. Um, and then I, I do have, because I wor uh, did some stuff with an art gallery in uh, LA, actually lived in one in Los Angeles. Uh, I have a lot of artist buddies. There were 14 of us living there. So um, I, I have a lot of artist friends and there's a few that I have in mind. Um, it's gonna cost me a decent chunk of change because they're very good at what they do, uh, but they're worth the money and I wanna have them do portraits uh, for me of, of like Mr. Brown or potentially even myself and, uh, and Kim. Um, and you know, some Victorian uh, attire, maybe in front of the house or something like that. I think that'd be a cool thing to have somebody else do because I've never enjoyed doing self portraits of, of me. I don't like painting myself. It's, you know, it's kind of weird, you know? You get kind of weird when you're looking at the little twinkle in your eye and you're like, oh, I just, I'm so sick of looking at me. <laughs> um. Oh, night, Jake, and remember, Head up. I can't say that it was always true. Planned obsoles obsolescence is a 20th century concept. Azram? I don't know what Azram is. Is responsible. But, um, yeah, it's definitely not a, a good idea to... I mean, planned obsolescence, I mean, I somewhat get it as far as a business model, is a good business model. Um, I mean, you certainly don't want your light bulb lasting forever. I know that was one of the first problems I had, like light bulb companies would die because their light bulbs, there's some of them that still haven't burnt out. They're like 120 years old or whatever. Um, but yeah, you kind of know how it goes. You can download and print art for, uh, from the Met for free. I don't necessarily want to have prints. I know like they would have had prints back then, but I would really like to have things that are uh, meaningful to the house or at least original to the house. Um, you know, as an artist, a painter myself, I like being surrounded by originals. Uh, I have some prints too, but um, most everything I own is, is, is their original real, real pieces. Um, I don't know, like when you can walk up and you can see the brush strokes and, and the depth of a painting, I think it, uh, it's more impactful that way. And um, well, I, you know, no disrespect to anybody who has, you know, prints on the wall, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, I think it's just because the fact that, you know, I, I know what it feels like to, to, to pull a, a brush across the canvas and create something. Um, and I think you can kind of feel that in a, in a real painting that in a, that a way that you can't feel, um, with a print. So, um, but it's still a, a good thing. I mean, if I need inspiration for painting some of my pieces, I mean, all artists, you know, copy and steal here and there. We all do. Um, it's kind of part, part and parcel for it. That's why you have an evolution of art. Just because you, you take a little bit of something from this painting, a little bit of painting, something from this painting, and you make it your own, right? Um, so yeah, uh, but yeah, good resource source for sure. Caleb, it's not a bucket, it's a chamber pot. <laughs> I don't think they had blue Lowe's chamber pots. I mean, just a guess. <laughs> nope. Uh, in way, Claddy27. May I ask how much you paid for the house? Yes, uh, it was 65000 Um, flipping awesome. Where did you study art? I went to American Academy of Arts in Chicago. I am one of those kids that grew up in a trailer park and could not afford college. I am entirely self-taught. Um, so basically I bought books and read books and, um, wanted it bad enough, I guess. So, uh, no, no college education for me. I have college credit in high school, uh, in graphic design. Um, but it was a class. I basically had enough credits in high school that I could go out of school and do a course for a year. Um, but even then that was just a very basic uh, education and how to use Photoshop and Illustrator essentially. Uh, 
Azram was the organization responsible for bulbs only lasting 1,000 hours. Filaments lasted forever, and the limited profits manufacturers got together. Your bulb lasts over 1,000 hours. Fined and shamed. Good to know. Uh, I knew there was a um, something that happened like that, like a group of people come together. I just didn't know the name of it. But uh, good information. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. You can't get a house in Vegas for that. There's very few places in the in the world that you can get a house for sixty five thousand uh, dollars. Now, granted, the, the walls were starting to fail in the back here, um, but I mean, honestly, like you couldn't have half of the woodwork in this house made for sixty five thousand um, dollars. And again, it's probably a good thing that I came along and got the house, and somebody didn't strip it of everything because it happens. So. Um, just want to say thank you. I think your project is really cool. Hope you hope to come visit one day. Blue Moon uh, Pictures, I hope you do as well. Uh, again, this is, this is everybody's house, so I just got to figure out a way that makes that possible. And I guess YouTube's a good way of doing that, so... so sad to see mo so many of these old homes losing their character. As you know, I lived in an 1890s farmhouse that somebody gutted and now is a shrine to the 1990s. I mean, I guess the other the other way of looking at it, though, is the house does exist. There's there's a part of the 1890s that made it to the future, you know? Um, it time traveled, if you will. Um, and I mean, I understand. People, styles change. People change, you know? The, the kids always rebel against the parents, right? And then, you know, they, they change styles and, and that's how we get new trends and new music and new everything, right? Um, so in, in, in a way, it's, it's good because it keeps the creative process going throughout the ages. Um, but I think it is a shame that we haven't um, thought more about the past, about certain things. Um, so, you know, there's, there's getting into everything, right? <laughs> I'm so old. Computers were not in art school when I graduated. Um, I mean, the the graphic design course I took in high school, we didn't have computers until halfway through the thing because they were ordering new ones. The old ones didn't work. So I learned tracking and kerning, which is the width of spacing of letters. Um, <laughs> I learned that by drawing it in a notebook, which was interesting. So I guess I learned that probably if you did graphic design stuff, I probably learned the same way you did as far as that's concerned. <laughs> Uh, hey man, where'd you learn how to plaster? Um, uh, mostly online, uh, as far as like technique is concerned. Um, and then I read a lot of forms for recipes. Um, and basically I came up with something that I thought would work from some old timer on some form from like 2008 talking about the difference between uh, hydraulic and, and uh, oh, what's the two words? Basically, it's the hot lime that steams hot. You have to like slake it for a long time and between uh, type S lime, which you can go get at the uh, Lowe's or any big box store. Um, and basically saying that at the end of the day, there isn't a chemical difference between them. Uh, I guess there's more of a workability uh, things. I, I, I mean, the Romans would disagree because they use this, the hot lime stuff and it's last forever. But, uh, I don't know if I'm necessarily even right all the time with what I'm doing with my plaster, but, um, it, it's held so far. And in five years, we'll really know if I did a good job or not. <laughs> Uh, one of 
YouTube videos. Yeah, no, I, this 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 channel is my full time job now. Um, and yeah, the, I think somebody said in here this this channel's way way more work than you know. Um, I've had you know many different jobs, and this is the one where I've actually had to ask for help to keep up with it all. Uh, my father helps with a lot of the um, the back end stuff because I just. You can't you can't answer 200 emails a day. You can't uh, reply to um, sometimes like a thousand comments a day, uh, and that doesn't count the Instagram or any other stuff you have to deal with. Plus, on top of the house renovations, so I mean it is it's a it's a lot of work more than I think uh, most people imagine. Um, For your housewarming party, me and the boys are getting the band back together. I don't know what band that is, but I'm I'm down for it. <laughs> uh, sorry to repeat this again, but any updates on the Butler's Pantry wallpaper? Uh, if I miss something, you're feel free to repeat uh, repeat it. I just it's hard; it bounces. You know the the chat isn't stable. Um, uh, as far I mean, it's I've I've obviously done the Adobe Illustrator bit. I haven't mess with it since i know a few people said things were out of line and yeah they were kind of like there's like a center eight that i started with of the, of the design of the flower we're going to call it the block um that are all lined up perfectly but then there's some on the outside that are a little messed up uh, but essentially i've just got to you know cut it out put it together um stencil it all in and i'm gonna hand paint it on the wall after stencil drawing it in so It must be snowing there. I see it on the windows. Uh, yes, Will, I am actually currently snowed in. And that's why we're doing this, this whole thing tonight. Uh, this will be my, my first night sleeping alone here at the house, so. <laughs> yeah, um, I went back uh, to computer graphics, worked in the field for 35 years, so I got burnt out. I knew you were into the design when I saw you use the heritage type fonts. Yeah, I mean, that stuff, it, it, those are huge time savers, those fonts and, and like the ornament packs and stuff like that. If I designed every single element of that, it would take me oh, so long. So, I mean, I think the a lot of things are quite beautiful, so... Um, Uh, what happened with the potential wallpaper making company? Did it fall through? Uh, no, I, I, I still want them to have the print so it can go out to other people. Um, we're, we're still going to do that. Um, and I think that I'm having them do another paper. It was more of a time reason because like the turnaround was so heavy and it's such a small room um, that I think it would be better spent for them to uh, maybe work on a different paper for the house. Um, when that bathroom doesn't really need to be in paper per se for it to look great. And, um, it's, it's the bigger time crunch. Um, I can't wait eight weeks to put the toilet up. I think that's a bit excessive, you know, and the toilet gets mounted to the wall and I don't want to have to disassemble the toilet to do the wallpaper. So, you know. Is your neighborhood up and coming? Uh, yes, uh, cool guy. Um, <laughs> great name by the way um the neighborhood's uh definitely changing uh quite a bit um there was a a project going in right across the street for me called the nga it's the national geospatial agency it is um not technically air force but sort of connected with the air force uh they fly like satellites and drones and stuff like that um but their uh offices are going to be right across the street from us so we have like a bit of a military um presence here i suppose nowadays um or at least somewhat uh but it's a 1.65 dollar development it's uh, one of the largest in st louis history and uh, things are changing very rapidly up here um that being said i think my the the few blocks around my house have probably been fairly solid for a while uh, at least as far as the people who live in their houses 
um, they uh, talking to a lot of the neighbors in the neighborhood and every in, in the neighborhood a lot of, and all that. Um, there's a lot of people who have been here for many many years who care very deeply about this neighborhood. Um, you know, I am in no way the first person to come up here and fall in love with this place. Uh, there are people who are born and raised here who are still here who love this place. Um, you know, potentially more than I do, which I think is hard because I, you know, in super I can get super emotional about my neighborhood because I love it here. Um, but yeah, some of the people I've met here, it's like I don't hold a candle to them. They've just done so much. Like they've, um, this is home, you know? And uh, I think it's cool to, um, you know, they look at me like I'm the next generation, the new generation come up here and making this all happen. But uh, I am definitely um, standing on the shoulder of giants who have kept this neighborhood intact and as good a condition as it is. It is. Um, had they owned all the homes up here, we'd have a perfectly preserved neighborhood. But you know, one person can only do as much as they can, but they can be the spark to take more people and, and make make more people want to do more things like this. So, um, yeah, neighbors definitely inspire me a lot. They're really awesome. Um, Alex, you got in the area at a good time. Absolutely. I couldn't afford to be up here at this point. I have a question. When do you think the house will be completed? Um, uh, it's a hard question because what is complete? Um, I think I will be working on this house until they put me in the ground um, or cremate me because I don't really want to be buried. But um, five years, I think, is decent for like a normal like standard of living here where most things are done. But I think um, the devil's in the details, so they say. And I think I will spend a lifetime getting the details right on this house. Collecting the right pieces, the right furniture, uh, making the white wallpaper, all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, I, a long time. Um, but in this process as well, I, I hope that I can go and help fix other people's houses. That I can um, maintain doing other things. Um, potentially take on uh, another house. Uh, of course, not to live in. This is my house forever. I'm, I'm not moving after this. Um, but just for the um, therapeutic nature of it and, uh, and to save another house. So I hope I can do that as well at some point. Um, no home is ever complete. Yes, yes, this is very true. So it's a hard question to answer. <laughs> Oh, enjoy your fish and chips, Andrea. <laughs> Have your ashes made into a brick and leave one brick missing ready for your descendants to slot you into. That's kind of cute. That would be kind of fun. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if they do that, but I, I suppose you could. Why not, right? Uh, I do think, um, yeah, the one guy, yeah, uh, was it Brett with uh, Ghost Town Living is restoring a, a whole ghost town? Yeah, I mean, that's a bigger task, but uh, we're talking more money, more people. Um, I mean, you have to have the resources to do that. I mean, the guy had to bring concrete up to places that doesn't have water. Um, I don't want to know what that costs. <laughs> So uh, best luck to him. I think he's run a really cool channel, and I love that, just like me, he digs so deep into the history, which I think is, is the most relevant part of any of it. Like, even if the things are gone, at least we have the story, right? So that's, that's pretty cool, and I'm glad they lean so heavily into that. Uh, does your house have Victorian swing arm curtain rods? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I mean, it's possible they did. I just, uh, there's no evidence of that particular facet of the house left. Um, you know, I, I, most of these rooms actually, like the parlors actually had shutters. And I don't know if uh, Victorian houses would have had shutters or curtains or both, uh, you know, at the same time. I don't exactly know how that all works. Because uh, I couldn't imagine having like a bunch of curtains in front of the shutters in the front. I don't know how that necessarily makes sense unless we're talking from like a winter perspective and then like having yes a very heavy velvet curtain would hold more heat in so there's that aspect so not a hundred percent sure mm. 
Mary, thank you so much for the five. Uh, how much do you worry about lead? Um, I don't worry about lead a terrible amount. Um, lead's only dangerous if you breathe it in, if you get it into your body somehow. Um, so like the stripper I used to strip the paint off, it, it keeps it wet. You spray it on and mist it, it stays wet. It never gets airborne. Um, like kids were always at risk for lead, right? Because if you eat it or you have pipes that are coming into your house that has it in it, you know, that's, that's how you get the lead, right? Um, so essentially, as long as you're not, you know, out here with a heat gun vaporizing lead, which, you know, they can say what they want about those, those heaters or whatever. Um, if you look it up, most of them actually get to the point of vaporizing the lead um, and you can breathe it and that's not good for you. Um, but for the most part, I don't worry about it too, too much because it doesn't, it doesn't usually affect me. Again, I'm not eating it. I'm not licking the walls or anything, so... And yeah, even a lead pipe's only a problem if it's disturbed. That it's very true, large because they can build up a, a film on the inside of them. So, um, you know. Uh, but that being said, we had the original lead lines coming into the house, and those have been replaced with copper because it just made more sense. And I do think uh, everybody's starting to kind of head to bed and... Uh, I'm gonna start doing that as well. So I'm gonna give a 10 minute warning and then I have to start uh, motivating myself to my, <laughs> my fainting couch over here. <laughs> you think you'll be stuck there for long? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think I'll be able to dig myself out uh, tomorrow. I do actually think I could probably get out of here now. Uh, I have a four wheel drive vehicle. I could probably push through it. Um, but it's kind of a good excuse to experience something new. I, I've not slept here, um, except for that one time with my buddy camping sort of thing. And I'm not really like, you know, it, it was new then it was fresh. Like this is my house. I'm here all the time. So I've not really spent a night alone here ever. And I think that will be really, it will be fun. I think so. It's a good excuse. Let's say, uh, Recall your first floor hall closet is painted green. Several of the small closets in my historic house are also painted green. I don't know if anything's painted the hall closet. Um, I don't think anything's painted green necessarily. I don't know. It's hard for me sometimes. You guys see colors. Um, I'm colorblind uh, or mildly colorblind. Like I see, I think the best way I've always started to describe is I see all like the base level colors, like purple, blue, green, red, all that stuff. It's in the blends I get mixed up. So most people see uh, like a million colors and I see like 10,000, you know, or like 100,000. I see like a 10% of what everybody else sees as far as the color in the margins, let's say. Uh, what time is it there? It is 10.25. So basically 10.30, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, do you know about, um, oh, the, the colorblind glasses? Um, I've had them. Uh, they definitely make some things pop like uh, traffic lights very vividly red, green, and orange. Um, but I mean, I could always see those. It just was like, not like it's poppy and bright. Um, I think because I'm mildly colorblind and not like most people who are like more severely colorblind, like my brothers are a little more uh, colorblind than I am. Um, I got a little lucky, I guess. Um, it helps them more than it does me uh, for whatever reason, I'm not sure why. Uh, French Second Empire wallpaper is poisonous because the green pig. Oh, uh, so here's the, um, Lars, the thing with Shields Green, which is the pigment, uh, that was made with cyanide, uh, it was more British actually than it was that. It was actually, um, oh, 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 man, I know this. Uh, what's his, uh, name? <sighs> okay, it's, it's the, the very famous, like, uh, wallpaper printer that everybody knows, um, like Bradbury and Bradbury has a bunch of his stuff. He's very like 1890s, like late Victorian wallpaper creator. Um, and it, yeah, it's not cyanide. Sorry, it's arsenic. Arsenic is the the shields green color. Um, but it seems like most of that was Britain in the U.S. 
because they had, they had banned it in the continent way before that, like 1860, they had banned the use of cyanide. Um, and even then, when you had it in Britain stuff, in Britain and the US, the reason it took so long for people to ban it is because for healthy adults to succumb to something like that, they would have literally had to been draped in it. Like you, you, you're, you'd have to have a shields green dress in a shields green room laying on a shields green bed for it to affect an adult. Uh, the people who suffered really from this were children and elderly people. Um, and it's from everything I've read, it seems like they stopped really doing that around 1880. Um, again, in, in the continents, uh, Germany, France, stuff like that, they stopped doing it way before then. Um, but it seems like Britain held on to it because uh, that designer that I can't think of the name of right now, um, he actually owned arsenic mines. And so he kept it around and kept basically doing it like the cigarettes companies did in the 60s, 70s. It's like, oh, it doesn't hurt nobody. There's no proof it hurts anybody. Uh, William Morris. Morris, yes. Morris owned uh, arsenic mines or some kind of mine. He had interest in it. And so kept the, the ruse up, let's say, for a very long time. Um, and that's why it persisted as long as it did in paper. But again, you would have to be uh, very, very, um, you know, covered in it to have problems. Arsenic was in Victorian everything. I mean, not necessarily. And again, Victorian, such a long era. If we're talking earlier in the Victorian era, yeah, um, they put it in a lot of things. They thought it was medicine to some extent, right? Um, but as you get later in the Victorian era, things, not, not, not so much, you know? I think it's another thing, like, people think um, Victorian everything has ars or, uh, asbestos in it. Actually, very few things of the Victorian era have asbestos in them. Uh, you're now your 1920s, 30s, 40s, when, when things become everything must be fireproof at all costs. Yeah, you start seeing more of that. Uh, didn't Napoleon die to that pain since he was in the bathtub? I don't know that it was Shields Green because I think it was Shields Green was like a. If I'm, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe it was invented by a Scottish like scientist in like, like early 1800s, and I believe Napoleon died in the late 1700s, like 1790 or something. I could be wrong. I could be off here. Like, there's some of the continental history I'm ever so slightly off with. Hey, Caleb, I told me I live close to your brother in Redding, California. Yeah, right on. Yeah, he lives up there. There's a lot of rock climbing. <laughs> Alexandro made it to a live. Woohoo. Uh, unfortunately, we are wrapping up here in about a minute, so I apologize. Uh, Napole didn't Napoleon die in 1820 or 1821? See, I'm off by a few years. I'm thinking like... 1790 and if it's 1820 like i said it's ever so slightly off which i mean yeah you're probably right i've just you know i'm not a hundred percent on all the eras <laughs> sorry alexandria next time for sure Five-month-year-old Labradoodle just came to <laughs> see who was talking. <laughs> all right, guys. I am going to wrap it up there, though. Thank you guys all so much um, for being with me for my, my first night alone in the house. And uh, I'll let you know if I have any ghost stories uh, on Monday. <laughs> so have a wonderful, wonderful night. Uh, and, yeah, I'll see you guys again Monday. Bye-bye. Uh, now I forgot how to end it.